do have a lot to cover. Uh, so we need to go ahead and get started. And the first thing we have on the agenda, which is very, very important, uh, we're going to swear in our new uh, counselors. Uh, so uh, officially, you will now become a part of the team. So uh, I don't, any word from uh, Smart, whether or not he's going to. He was just talking to Ronnie a minute ago. Oh, okay. He was getting his iPad set up. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, he, he'll probably jump on here shortly. Okay, well, uh, we are going to do the swearing in. This is exciting. I'm excited. Of course, I'm excited today. I just feel. It's a great excited. day, Mayor. It's a great day. <laughs> and it's a perfect day to swear in our new counselors. It's yes, just, it is. It's a feel good day. So uh, Mike is going to handle the swearing in. And of course, uh, being virtual, I think it's going to work out as best we can. So uh, do you want to wait for SMART or you want to go ahead and just dive in? Uh, I'd say we just kind of start diving in. Hopefully he'll jump on and uh, in the process here, we'll make it there. Okay. All right, so uh, let's start with uh, Councillor Thompson. How are you doing this evening, Councillor Thompson? You're muted. Trying to get my audience members in here. Oh, hey. Oh, I see you have a whole crowd back there, boy. All right, sweet. We got some witnesses here. All right, how are you guys doing back there? We're doing great. Okay, no booing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right counselor thompson can i have you raise your right hand and repeat after me all right i state your name i shauna thompson do you hereby solemnly swear do you hereby solemnly swear that i will to the best of my ability that i will to the best of my ability faithfully fulfill and discharge the duties of the office faithfully fulfill and discharge the duties of the office to which i have been elected to which I've been elected. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. The laws of the state of Oregon. The laws of the state of Oregon. And the ordinances of the city of King City. And the ordinances of the city of King City. Congratulations, Councillor Thompson. <laughs> All right, Councillor Moore, you're up. Where's your witness crowd? <laughs> I, I promised uh, off-camera attendance. Oh, do you want to uh, look? Ah, there we go. <laughs> All right, we have some witnesses. All right, uh, Kate, may I have you raise your right hand, please, and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Kate Moore. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will to the best of my ability. That I will to the best of my ability. Faithfully fulfill and discharge the duties of the office. Faithfully fulfill and discharge the duties of the office. To which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. The laws of the state of Oregon. The laws of the state of Oregon. And the ordinances of the city of King City and the ordinances of the city of King City. Congratulations, Councillor Moore. Woo, thank you, everyone. Luckily I was on mute. <laughs> Yay. Congratulations. All right, um, we still have uh, Councillor Ocholi to swear in, but I guess we'll uh, have to hit him when he jumps on. Okay. Uh, so right. here we can progress if you'd like. Yeah. Okay, just uh, real quickly, uh, a few words to our new team members. Uh, I am so thrilled and happy to have you guys on this team. Uh, the reality of it is we are all here for the very same reason, that we want to do everything we can to make the residents of King City uh, and the city itself the best it can be. We are here to support every resident of King City and beyond because there are going to be some new members coming up before long and we want to make sure that everybody understands that that's the only reason we're here is to make sure that we su support the residents of king city um 
what do we want King City to be? We want it to be safe. We want it to be uh, prosperous and we want it to be a welcoming community. And I know that's why you guys are on board. I know that's why you're here. And I am super excited about having you. So thank you for joining us. I appreciate it very much. The work now begins. So thanks again. You guys want to give a speech? I just want to say thank you to everyone who supported me and um, the people who voted for me. And hopefully, if I run again, I'll um, have more people voting for me because I've <laughs> know, gotten to know my neighbors a little bit more. <laughs> That's exactly right. Thank okay. you. All right, congratulations, Kate. Thanks, John? everyone. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mayor, for those nice words. And I'm looking forward to serving alongside all of you. And welcome, Kate, to the council. And um, this is going to be a great year. I'm really looking forward yeah. to it. I like that. We, and we're going to make sure that we do our part. Okay. Well, we don't have smart, so uh, you want to just uh, move forward? Yeah, so I just heard from him. He's just having a little trouble connecting. Uh, he's trying to get on right now, but... Uh, okay. He's right, we'll, we'll catch him uh, on the rebound there. Okay, and uh, the way we begin all council meetings is with a moment of silence. Uh, we've got a lot uh, to be thankful for, but at the same time, we have a lot to be concerned about. Uh, the pandemic is still front and center, and we're trying our best to uh, manage through it. We have done well as a city, I believe. Uh, we haven't had any major outbreaks or anything related to uh, King City, but at the same time, it has become painfully aware that there is a lot of hatred in this country that is going to have to be dealt with. Uh, and we have to do everything we can to make it clear that it won't be tolerated in King City, that we're all in this together and we're going to love one another to the best of our ability. So with that being said, uh, let's do a moment of silence for uh, those people who were lost in the insurrection and uh, you know, to make sure that we know that we want this to be a better country than it is, has been, so. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, let's call the meeting to order. Mike, you want to do roll call? Sure, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilor Fender. Here. Councilor Platt. Here. Councilor Moore. Here. Councilor Thompson. Here. Councilor Paulson. Here. Uh, and I have Councilor Trulli having difficulty, and then Mayor Tom Mayor Gibson. Here. All right. All accounted for. Okay, uh, we have, uh, thanks for that, Mike, approval of minutes from uh, May 13th, 2020, and also May, uh, November 18th, 2020. I move approval of the minutes from May 13th, 2020, and the minutes from November 18th, 2020. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Raise your aye. hand so we know. You can wave. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll move right along and dive in. Uh, we have a special presentation uh, from Washington County. Is um, the representative on line? Mayor, before we go into that, uh, um, I, I, Gwen is on. I saw her trying oh, to. Okay. There she is. Yeah. Um, but we just had uh, uh, Councilor Ochoa log in. Oh, okay. All right, good. So, uh, Smart, can you uh, log on? Can you uh, unmute and you're gonna need your video. Can you hear me now? Yep. Can you turn on your video? Yeah, that's crashing it. When I turn it on, it crashes it. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. Okay, well, if you want to just repeat after me, we'll swear you in. Gwen, if you don't mind just hanging on for one second, we'll get you in here. Thank you. And uh, okay. Smart, you, you just uh, raise your right hand and uh, repeat after me for, for me, will you? Say, uh, I, state your name. 
I, Smarter Julie, do hereby solemnly swear, do hereby solemnly swear, that I will to the best of my ability, that I will to the best of my ability, faithfully fulfill and discharge, legally fulfill and discharge, the duties of the office, the duties of the office, to which I've been elected, to which I've been elected, and that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America, and I will support the Constitution of the United States of America, the laws of the state of Oregon, the laws of the state of Oregon, and the ordinances of the city of King City, and the ordinances of the state of King City. Congratulations, Councilor Ocholi. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mike. And sorry about the, the, the technical difficulties I'm having here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, Ryan, I'll take it over to you. Okay, welcome, Smart, and uh, congratulations on uh, another term. We're very proud of everything that everybody is doing, and our team is now complete. So, thank, thank you, Mayor Justin, and thank you, everyone. I really appreciate the opportunity to continue serving King City with this great team here. So, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay, Smart, thank you so much. Okay, uh, we'll move on. Uh, let's see, Gwen Ashcom. Are you there, Gwen? Yes, okay. I am here. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. We're looking forward to your presentation. And it's a very important topic, preventing youth access to tobacco. So, Ronnie, can we uh, pass the controls over to Gwen? I think I can just push the share screen. Want me to okay. go ahead and try? Yeah, let me just get mine on there. Oh, I can't, okay, just a second here. Okay. You guys, you can all see this? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, yes, um, my name is Gwen Ashcom. I'm the Tobacco Prevention Coordinator with Washington County Public Health. And I want to talk to you today about some, um, pro a proposal that we are looking at doing for Washington County and seeing, gauging your interest and um, want to participate in those efforts. So we're going to talk about some evidence-based strategies that we know have worked and are currently in progress for preventing youth access to tobacco, a little bit of the landscape, what it kind of looks like across Washington County, a little bit of data, and then where we are now. And I will try to move through this relatively quickly, um, but if there's any questions or anything, please let me know. And we'll have time at the end too to talk a little more. Um, these are the strategies that we know work. Um, so they're evidence-based, we know they work to prevent youth access. We've been able in Oregon to do two things. So we've been able to raise the purchasing age from 18 to 21. Um, that was wonderful. We know that 90% of our smokers start before the age of 18, 95% by the age of 21, and 99% by the age of 26. So um, delaying access to products can hopefully delay a, a future addiction to these products. We also just recently in November passed the tobacco tax that included the vape tax, which is the first time vape has ever been um, been part of that. So um, that was exciting to raise it by $2. And now um, that went into effect January 1st, and it does include vape. So those are two things. Every time we raise the price of these products, it encourages um, users to quit. So that's another strategy that has also worked. And it also tends to um, hopefully help youth from picking it up and starting because of the cost. So again, Tobacco 21 was back, back in January of 2018 is when that went into effect. And the reason- this meeting is being recorded. The reason that we really wanted to continue with um, or work on this was we, our hope is that a 21 year old is not hanging out with a 14 year old. So that was the real driver of raising the purchasing age. It's to break up the social circle. We know that there could be seniors in high school that are 18 that then purchase the products and take them back to school and give them to a sophomore or 15 year old. Um, so we hope by again, delaying access, stretching out that time that you can legally purchase will mean that we'll have less youth using um, the products, especially getting access to them via friends and schools. And that's the real, real piece behind Tobacco 21 is just delaying access. Let's see. Let's see what's happening here. Okay. 
So this is what our retail environment looks like. In the spring of 2018, we participated in the statewide tobacco and alcohol retail assessment. This is the first time the state has done alcohol, so that's also available um, if anyone's interested in looking at that. But um, we've done tobacco before, so this is the second time, I think, that we've participated in this research study. So across Oregon, folks visited about 2,000 grocery stores, convenience stores, gas stations, anywhere that youth can access these products. And this is our results from our county. So for us, we partnered with Portland State University. A class was able to assist me in going in and looking at these products. It was just a survey they just filled out while they visited the store didn't really have to engage anyone. They could just kind of do it by seeing what's there. We looked at 257 retailers. We chose those retailers, again, based on being a big box store, gas station, or convenience store. We don't have a list of uh, retailers because Oregon is one of nine states without a tobacco retail license. And that is something that makes it very difficult when we're out doing these assessments to really get at how, who is selling in our communities, what are they selling them for, all of the all of those things. So we started by taking a look. This is this is the landscape. This is what our, our youth are seeing when they're when they're out and about. We know that we do have a really bad situation <laughs> with electronic cigarette use in our youth. Um, and September 12th of 2018, the FDA actually came out and called it an epidemic that requires historic action. And this just shows you, this just highlights the problem here in Washington County. So you can see how dramatically it jumped in use. And we're still seeing that happen. Um, we're now seeing, you might have heard a lot about Juul. That was a very popular brand that we heard a lot of, looks like a USB drive. Juul is now just one of products. It's no longer the, the, the highlight product. It's one of many. The more popular ones currently tend to be disposable. So we're looking at pu puff bars, which look very similar to a Juul, but they have about 200 preloaded puffs in there. And then instead of refilling your cartridge, you just throw it away. And those also come in a variety of flavors. And that's what we also have learned is who, who is attracted to those flavors. Well, it's our young people. Um, when you get start looking at adults over the age of 25, we have a dramatic decrease in the use of flavored products. If folks are vaping, they tend to be doing more traditional tobacco flavors, but all those strawberry flavor, uh, bubble gum, creme brulee, all of those are preferred by the crowd 25 and under. So we do know that this is a situation that has it, it's it's part of what is driving that use of a vaping product because now you have something that doesn't burn when it goes down the throat like traditional tobacco it doesn't leave any lingering smell on you it doesn't taste bad it doesn't stain your teeth all of those things that we would see from traditional tobacco so i call this the new tobacco especially with the newer generations i don't see us making a full-blown switch back to the combustible tobacco from years ago because technology is so much more advanced, new products are hitting the market all the time, and it's really those flavors. You can have something that tastes like strawberry, why would you want to taste something that has a very burned kind of taste in your mouth um, as opposed to something that tastes like a milkshake or something. So kind of with that background of information for you, this is what's leading us to, to want to pursue tobacco retail licensing. And the reason I'm talking to you today and other cities is to gauge your interest in the, these efforts. Tobacco retail licensing would require any business that is selling a tobacco product, including a vaping product, to have to have a license to do so. This would also let us be, do educational support, um, anything that a business would need. It is an annual licensing fee that we would be looking at with an enforcement system. So the licensing fee would cover the cost for Washington County to, oh, I don't know what happened. Let me try this one more time. Let me get back in. And we'll just go right here. Okay. Um, right now, tobacco retail licensing is is looking like it's going to show up at this legislative session for statewide. The licensing that's being proposed statewide is a straight up license fee 
that's it. There's no other extras added on. So with that, we are wanting to talk to all of you because we are still thinking of wanting to push our tobacco retail license a little sooner than later. Um, and oh, this keeps starting and stopping. Not really sure. Let me try this again. Okay. I'm just glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> this is really weird. It doesn't normally happen like this. So that's why I'm like, hmm. Um, so thanks for your patience. Uh, we are still looking at it for unincorporated Washington County. And then our hope is that the cities will want to join us via intergovernmental agency agreement. And the reason we're, we're kind of pushing it a little bit is because due to COVID, this work went on pause for quite a long time. And some of you may remember we were talking about this about almost a year ago, and we did some presentations in the beginning. COVID happened, and then we all started, um, we all had to stop um, doing our work. So now we are coming back to it, and we are wanting to see again about doing this reinvigorating this but starting it with um starting it with unincorporated and if we can pass it with unincorporated washington county the benefit to that is that we would be grandfathered into the state process so really what it means is it gives us a little more flexibility and choice on how we want to administer it so instead of if the state passes it it's just we, we have to go with what the state decides it's all going to be whatever the fees will be the penalties will be all of that if we have our own we get a say if we want to still manage it ourselves what we want our penalties to look like there's just a lot more to that we get to do instead of just having to go with the state so that that's our hope and, and why we are kind of pushing this work a little bit quicker i have no idea why this keeps doing this to me um let me just... Your internet might be having some issues, possibly. Yeah, I don't know. It's very strange. I've never had this happen before. Um, but this is this is basically what the hope is of having TRL, is that it will reduce youth access. We'll be able to monitor it. We are looking at additional components of our tobacco retail licensing program. So we are looking at, we looked at all these things. Um, the main thing we're looking at now is just flavor restrictions. So we're not calling it a flavor ban because we would allow flavors to be sold in 21 and over establishments. So that would keep your vape shops, that would keep um, flavors possibly in marijuana shops, um, any place that you have to be 21 and over to enter. It would just take flavors out of grocery stores, gas stations, all of those places we know kids go to. So we include in the flavors, we're also including menthol. So that's also going to be uh, your mint with vape as well. So anything that's mint or menthol, um, we're just going to go ahead and, and ask that those be in the 21 and over establishments. We are also hoping to do um, restrictions on price discounts. So no two for ones, all of those things. We know that that price again drives use. So we're hoping that we can eliminate the, the two for one discounts. What we heard before when it comes to um, our other cities was that you all, what we were hearing was most of the cities weren't big fans of us pursuing zoning or density. That was something that each city would rather they control if that's something that they wanted to do. So we took that off the table of our ordinance and any type of advertising guidelines would have to also be incorporated into a sign ordinance that each city, again, would have to kind of, would have to do that on their, on their own. You can't, you can't put a ban or a restriction on a particular product Sorry, this is like not working for me. Um, do you all have this presentation in front of you by chance? In paper form? Hey Mike, can you pull it up on, I, th I think I put it in the... Uh... <laughs> we have officially got bombed. Maybe that's why I'm having trouble. Maybe somebody's trying to... <laughs> right. From the outside? Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. Okay. That did happen once at a state meeting that I was a part of. So that was pretty interesting. No more records and shit. But instead, we're going to spend oh. 150 grand just to make sure we want to see. You are, getting, you are definitely getting someone trying to infiltrate your meeting. How do we stop that from happening? I'm doing it right now. Yeah. 
can't remember that one we were on that one time burned into my brain yeah that was yep. disturbing yep. Okay. all right you, you got a lot i didn't even know that was a thing mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah where there's a world there's a way okay, so have we locked this out yeah paul is no longer in here okay should I go ahead and try again? Do you think maybe yes, go ahead and try that again. was it? Okay, let's let's see what happens. Okay, so hopefully I won't get bumped off again. Um, so these are the things that we're thinking of. Like, Sorry, uh, that, that was me. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. So we are uh, not looking at the advertising guidelines because again, that would require each city to change a sign ordinance, where then you would have to decide that only 10% of the outside of a store could have advertising. It would have to apply to all products. You can't just uh, restrict a certain product. So it were, it's a little bit more work, um, but a city could definitely do that. And that is something you could consider in the future if you felt that you were having a lot of convenience stores doing billboard kind of blasting and it was another issue that that is something that could be considered in the future it's not something we're looking at right right in this ordinance um so we wanted to also see what would be the impact of tobacco retail licensing in our community when it comes to the the business environment so we partnered um, with portland state university's northwest economic research center and this is what they came up with so we you can see that's a very low impact when you're looking at employees fte um, we're looking at less you know just slightly less than six full-time positions being affected across the entire county. We would of course be hiring for this program as well. So we're hoping that would offset that, but the impact is just so very minimal um, that they did not find it to be statistically um, right. relevant to cause a, cause a problem. Okay, these are the other jurisdictions that have passed tobacco retail licensing. Clatsop is the latest one. They just launched it just a couple months ago, I want to say, so very recently. Multnomah is the longest. They've been, they're in year four of their operations. And then we also have Benton, Klamath, and Lane who are operating. And those, those are, are a little different in that some of them might have unincorporated and a couple cities have joined so far or just unincorporated, still working on cities. Uh, Multnomah is the one that has gone full blown, has been able to get cities to join the efforts. It's actually a countywide ordinance that they're operating with. And that's similar to what we are looking to do here in Washington County. So we're, we're hoping that you would join us in those efforts. And that's similar to what is already in place with animal services, um, that same situation where we would come in, we would manage it all for you. We would just let you know if you had a particular retailer that was particularly you know, heavily violating or something that we, we felt you needed to know about this situation. Otherwise, we would handle all of that. Um, they would get their license through the county. We were proposing they would have two inspections a year. So one, that's just a compliance check. Do you have your license up? You're, you're displaying the products appropriately. All of those things, just kind of a, hey, do you need anything? And then a second inspection, that would mean that everybody has to uh, you know, make sure they're in compliance with minimum legal sales age. So we would send people in that are about 18 to 20 and see if they purchase. And if they don't purchase, that's great. That's what we want to see. If they do make a sale, then that's when we would go in and go into the enforcement piece of, um, of the, the licensure. So that's, that's really quickly what it would look like. What we've done already is have some conversations with other cities across the county. Um, we've also gotten support to do this work from our county board of commissioners. They've given approval for unincorporated and also for us to have these conversations with all of you. We've gotten some advocate support. Uh, I co-chair our substance use prevention collaborative, which is part of our community health improvement plan for the county. And that collaborative is made up of schools, law enforcement, anybody that has a vested interest in youth substance prevention. So we have coalitions, we have, um, we have life works, we have youth contact, just anyone in the community that, that works with youth are part of that. And they've all expressed interest in this work and support of this work. And our public health advisory council has also given their support. 
we were able to do a community panel survey this last August, just recently. So we were excited that that was able to happen even with COVID. Uh, we were able to do a telephone survey, about 400 residents of Washington County uh, found out that most of them are very supportive. It's over 80% are supportive of this effort and over 90% when it comes to communities of color, which is wonderful to hear that they're supportive because those communities are particularly targeted by the tobacco industry and their communities are most impacted by the tobacco industry. And they've all expressed support. We wanted to continue with that survey and do focus groups and, and reach other communities that we know a phone survey is just not the best way to make those relationships happen. But COVID happened and that really derailed that piece of us being able to do that, that face-to-face -face connection. Um, it's something that we're still thinking about, hopefully revisiting and doing once um, the pandemic is is past and, we, and we've moved through that. So that's that's everything that I have for you in a nutshell about what this program is um, and where we're at with it. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. This is my contact information. Should any of you think of questions later, definitely can reach out to me. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions now if you have any and any feedback you have. I have a question, Gwen. Yes. Why are there, why would there be six jobs lost? if we were to enact the TRL? Yeah, what, how, the, how the Northwest Economic Research Center did the analysis was they look at what the cost of a retail license would be on a business and they calculate, they have all these systems that they run. I'm just looking really quickly for my notes. Um, so they look into what the cost of the license and if that business would be impacted, how so, and would it would it force them to have to, you know, cut back on something? We don't an actually anticipate that reduction because more often than not, they make up for it by selling other products and or raising the price of products, which right now tobacco has been raised, as we know, through the tax. But also there's a lot of deals that the tobacco industry makes with these retailers. So they tell them, don't you worry about it. We'll cover that little bump that you have to pay so you, you'll keep selling our product. So they tend to not really be hit that hard, as you might think, because the tobacco industry definitely helps and gives them lots of perks and benefits to, that's why you see so much um, tobacco advertising, because every time they put up an ad, they get a kickback from the tobacco industry for displaying that ad. So the more ads they put, the higher the, the check is for them. So that's why we don't anticipate it. But if, if, if you didn't have that factored all in, um, that would might that could potentially be the impact that a business, if it's a convenience store, might if they had to reduce some hours on someone's, you know, and you total it across the county, that's why we're looking at that number. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Gwen, uh, there must be some opposition to this. Are you aware of opposition and where might that opposition to this plan, where would that come from? Right. Um, so far, I've been able to speak to almost everyone. I still have to speak with Banks and Tigard. Um, Tigard has expressed interest in the past for, for this, so it remains to be seen. But the only one that has been really, really adamant about possibly not, not joining our efforts is Sherwood. And that's mainly coming from that message was made loud and clear by their mayor. I'm not sure where the rest of their council sits on that. Um, and then Gaston was, they, they weren't committing either or. They, they were just kind of sitting with it still. So haven't really gotten a firm yay or nay from them. Um, North Plains is also wanting just a little more information. So they just, they didn't wanna say yay or nay quite yet either. They wanted us to come back, which we would do anyway with all of you, is come back when the ordinance is officially drafted, which is getting close to being finalized. But North Plains also was curious in seeing a budget for how this program would run, what we're estimating that to be. I can tell you right now, I don't, I, I keep forgetting to bring it right up in front of me, but it is um, between eight and $900 for a licensing fee. And that's an annual fee. That number we came to based on how much it would take to run a program and hire the people we need, the software we need, all of that. And based on recommendations and things we've heard from Multnomah County. What we, what Multnomah County didn't take into fact was if someone violates, you know, violates the license, it's, it requires additional inspections and additional time 
and they didn't anticipate how many violations they were going to have. And so they, they were at a 20 some percent failure rate, which is really high. So we kind of are factoring all of those things in. And being that I don't know how many retailers I really have, I based it off that number that you saw earlier for the landscape assessment of 257. I, I added another 150, made it an even 400 just assuming there's people out there I don't know. And so it very well could be we find out later, oh, it's not, we need to adjust our budget because it's not as many as I thought. Or we just want to make sure that we have the right amount and that we don't have to go back to our board of commissioners and then ask to raise it because that's where Multnomah is at. And so that's th those were just lessons learned from the other ones that have gone. But so far, everyone else that I've spoken to have, have expressed interest in joining. So it's just those couple cities still. I have another question. Yeah, sure. So the, the recent tax that was just passed to, I think you said it was $2 more. Mm -hmm. um, what's that money being used for? And can't that money pay for this program? Because I guess my only concern is, you know, we just saw one of our local small businesses here in King City close its doors because of a new tax that, you know, the, the, the county or the state, I'm not sure which it was, put on their business, a sales tax basically. Um, so I guess I just want to be, um, I want us to be aware of how this might impact our small businesses here. Right. Um, so the tax is, is on the consumer. So that doesn't affect the business owner, but it, it affects the buyer, the customer. Right now we are in the midst, and I, I actually had a state, state uh, meeting, our Tobacco Reduction Advisory Council met this morning, and we were exactly talking about this. Um, how is that money going to be sent for prevention? Um, so we are hoping we'll see some going to prevention. There's also going to be some going to some equity work and different things like that. So we really don't know quite yet. Those conversations are just now starting so we don't really know um, but that would take place a lot on the state level and how they choose to allocate the funds um, for us this would be you know we're, we'd be collecting the money at the county level so that's um, also something that you know we we don't know how the tax will affect those things quite yet until we hear from from the state um, part of this work that we're also doing is, and I forgot to mention, is that we're contracting with um, Human Impact Partners. They're located in California near Berkeley, and they work on equity, and they're helping, they're going to help me uh, make sure that tobacco retail licensing is done in an equitable way, that it's, that we're taking into account how we are communicating about this with small business owners and with also limited English speaking business owners, and that all our, we make this process as easy as we can. And so they're gonna be helping me figure out how to roll this out in a way that makes sense for everyone's community. Cause it's gonna look very different depending on the city that we're in. Um, so we really wanna be thoughtful about that process. So that's something that we're already thinking of and, and working towards um, as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, when, go ahead, uh, Dave. Gwen, how how is that tax collected? And the uh, the business is going to have to separate those funds and so on. How does that work? You mean the licensing fee for tobacco retail licensing? There's or a tax per unit, or is it just the just the licensing fee? Yeah, for, for tobacco retail licensing, it's a it's a license fee. So it's similar to what a business already pays for for alcohol when they're gonna sell alcohol or marijuana. This would just be another one of those licenses that they would have to achieve, you know, purchase, repurchase every year. So we would be in contact with them, we would send them reminders. That's the whole software system that I was talking about to manage the whole program. So it'd be a one year fee that would come up to renew the license every year. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what would you want from us? I mean, <laughs> well, what, 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 what I, so we already supported this, what would you like from us? Yes. Um, so one, I with the, this this conversation of hearing if you have any concerns or anything that um, you would like more information on, um, I will be coming back around once we have that ordinance more finalized to share with you. But if there's anything else you want to see besides that, and then also where maybe you feel as a council you'd be leaning towards, you know, if you have the right information and everything, is this something you would support joining us on or 
are there any reservations and you know concerns that would keep you from joining these efforts? Okay. Well, I can tell you right now that I support anything that's going to protect our children uh, from harm. So it's a, it's a good uh, concept. It's something that I think is important. And, uh, and for the rest of the council, I, I can't speak for them, you know. So if we uh, need to make sure that we are all in support of it and look forward to the ordinance that's going to be coming through so that we have an opportunity to understand very clearly uh, what is uh, what kind of impact it's going to have on the businesses. And we don't have that many, first of all. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have the grocery outlet, we have uh, the liquor store, uh, King City Liquors, and maybe uh, the coffee shop and uh, Dottie's, I, I don't know. So maybe there are about four or five uh, businesses in King City uh, that this would apply to. Uh, Micah? Yeah, I, um, thank you very much for the presentation. I definitely su support this, this effort. Um, was curious just to find out what type of feedback you had gotten from retailers that you'd spoken to about, uh, especially about the um, the license of just, uh, you know, is this something that in some ways gives them some backbone or, or, or teeth to deny uh, giving uh, or selling to minors and they support it? Or is this something that they're fighting back on paying any additional money? Yeah, we've had limited, honestly, limited conversations with retailers because we were starting all of that and then COVID happened. So that delayed some of our interactions. I've had, um, I've gone to a few city chambers and uh, small business association groups. And so far, the, all of those folks have been supportive. I haven't heard anyone say they didn't agree with, with this. Um, you know, our, our hope is that we keep it local. Like I said, the state is still pursuing it, but this is, this is still like about the eighth or ninth time, believe it or not, this has gone, come up at the state level and been, you know, didn't get that far. The bill ended up dying. So we don't know, but this time they have stripped the bill so far down to being just a license fee that it could very well pass. And so that's why we're kind of picking up our game a little bit because we get grandfathered in that way. It would just give more choice to us. Um, so I think business owners are aware that this has, this is a thing that keeps coming up. Um, some of them have been surprised in a, you know, talking to me, like they've been surprised something like this doesn't exist because they, they know their counterparts in other states and all of this, and it's very normal to have a license. So they've been actually surprised there isn't one here. Um, so I, I haven't heard anybody negatively against it. I think most of them um, feel it will hold, hold other businesses accountable um, so that we have a way to monitor that they're not selling to youth. And if we make the penalties strict enough, we can really do some impact as far as like, just don't sell to kids. I mean, this is basically what this is about is just following the law and don't sell to kids. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as people do that, we hope it will be fine and run smoothly for them. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? Well, Gwen, this is great, you know, and I really appreciate the work that you are doing. And as I said, it's important. And uh, I think uh, once we know a little bit more, you can kind of count on our uh, support for this, you know, and I think uh, based on uh, not hearing any opposition to it uh, from the council, I'm going to make an assumption that uh, we can be supportive of uh, doing the right thing in this uh, particular arena. So, uh, Mike, do you have any comments uh, related to it? No, I don't have any comments. I think we've uh, kind of walked this before, Gwen, when, when you had a chance to present before. And, uh, you know, I think we just keep our ear to the ground. Um, you know, taxes are always concerning, especially for small businesses, I think. Um, that's something we all need to be cognizant of, of what those impacts and ramifications are. Uh, but I don't think anyone would stand against the program. I think we're all 100% uh, behind keeping tobacco out of the, the hands and lungs of our little ones. So, uh, you know, I think you'll find a, a, a hefty support there. Uh, but the, the tax is always that one uh, yeah. drawback, but it is yes. what it is. Okay. And I, can, I will definitely be back in touch with you, um, Mike, once I have like the actual ordinance, it's very close um, in my hands to figure out how you want me to circulate that <laughs> with your counsel. Sure thing. Yeah, just uh, shoot it my way. We'll have a review and uh, legal counsel take a look and, and then we'll present it back to this body and move forward. 
All right, that sounds good. Okay, okay if we don't have any other questions or concerns, Gwen, I want to thank you so much. It's always a pleasure seeing you, and it was yeah. a great presentation, so thank you. Thank you, thank you for your time. I really right. appreciate and it. Great thank work. you. Okay. Yeah. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Bye, Gwen. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll move on to our open forum. Uh, we covered everything else. Is that correct, Mike? We got uh, everybody sworn in. So now we'll go to public forum. We welcome public comment at this time. Council will be happy to receive your comment pertaining to items on the agenda, including questions, suggestions, complaints, and items for the future. Each person's time will be limited to three minutes. Uh, do we have anybody, Ronnie? Anyone? Ronnie, um, are you aware? I asked everybody to unmute themselves if they have anything to chat. Um, once, going doesn't, twice. Doesn't look like we have anybody here to talk. Okay. All right. Well, All right. We'll, we'll, once, going twice. Ronnie, don't we have? Uh, Oh, we have TVF and R. They're going to present on the resolution. Yeah, on the resolution, uh, seven point three. Yeah, seven point three. Um, I believe they're all. They may also give an update on the COVID stuff um, if she's up for it. Maybe. Uh, since we have, a, do we want to go ahead and do that, Norris, before we do our election of officers? Oh, no, election officers, we can get through that pretty quick and then we can get into the regular business. Okay, all right. Uh, so we'll close the open forum and then we'll go, uh, there isn't any unfinished business. We'll go to new business and we do have to uh, elect, uh, appoint officers. So uh, Councillor Moore has pointed out that uh, we don't technically have a secretary or treasurer in the charter. Those mm -hmm. aren't necessarily positions that we have to fill. I think that uh -huh. was something that we were looking at previously, but it's up to this council on what they wanted to do. Um, that was a, a holdover from the previous council um, because they wanted, uh, we had a couple of councilors that wanted to have a little bit more uh, involvement in other roles. So uh, per our charter, we really have two positions. That's the mayor and council president. Um, and so, Mayor, uh, maybe you want to uh, ask for a nomination for uh, mayor, and then we can ask for a nomination for council president. And then uh, perhaps if we want to uh, carry forward those other two positions, we can ask for uh, uh, nominations for those as well. Okay, I kind of like the idea of having uh, a treasurer for sure someone that works uh, with you on the budget and has a better understanding of that. I was never really clear uh, on exactly what the role of the secretary is. So it, for the purpose of everybody here, uh, before we decide uh, what uh, the secretary would do, can you kind of give a brief overview of what that role would be? That's as much for me as it is for everybody else. <laughs> sure. So what we uh, reserved as kind of like duties for the secretary was a review of any sort of uh, uh, RFPs, any sort of legal documents, those sort of, hey, would you guys keep it down? And uh, any sort of legal stuff to deal with. And um, that way they, they had the chance to review that before uh, it came to the council. Okay. All right, so we need some opinions from other counselors before we move forward, because I'd like to really kind of get an understanding of whether or not we want to have those roles. Uh, I have an opinion on the uh, treasurer. I can see where there may be a benefit in having a secretary. So uh, other thoughts I before think, we move uh, forward? Mayor, um, <clears throat> I think the leadership roles are important to develop um, kind of a conduit into a, 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 a more executive role, right? I, I think, um, I, I know that all of us have a 
discussed, you know, changing a little bit the way that maybe the mayor position down the road, right, that maybe that goes on the ballot. But I think that it's really important to cultivate and kind of have a conduit of, of people and help kind of transition them from just um, kind of member to a more executive level. And I think traditionally um, on other boards that I've served, there is a process of, um, of kind of a, a, I don't know, learning or whatever. It's been a very long day and I was very up very early. So I apologize for being so inarticulate, but uh, you know, I think it's important for if someone has a, uh, down the road uh, an eye on being president or being mayor being much more involved in city i think starting in, at a secretary level transitioning to treasurer and then becoming president or you know cycling through some of the leadership to help kind of ground them and round them out as a as an executive member of the of the team is important so i i will say i don't particularly like the explanation that uh, Mike just gave as far as having it be more of a legal content, I don't think that's appropriate um, task for necessary a secretary. I think there could we could develop a little bit better, uh, uh, you know, uh, description or, or uh, tasks on that. But I think, um, I think keeping those positions and using it to help con con cultivate mentor and kind of participate uh, is important. Well, are we in a situation where before we decide on, uh, we can do these at any point in time. Do we need a better definition of what those roles would be? Uh, don't we have the ability uh, to make those assignments and make a decision on that later? Well, we also had the secretary as a, sig as a signatory. Is that correct or did we not? Do you recall? We no, we don't, we didn't do that. No. It, no uh, so uh, for John Boylston, we gave him the secretary position because he asked for it. He did what he kind of did was read over the minutes and make sure they were good, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we should wait on the secretary position uh, until we have more defined answers. And that could be when we put that position on the new charter when that comes out in a year or two. Okay. And uh, what about the treasurer? We need, should make a decision on that now too. Uh, treasurer, um, that was brought on by Gretchen and she wanted to be uh, more involved in the finances and kind of looking where things are going. It's always good to have, you know, a second, third, fourth, fifth eye, you know, to look at the financial financials. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, all Mira did the finances, she gave it to Mike and Mike presented it to Gretchen and yeah, so um, there was no, there was no signing of anything or anything like that. Yeah, so Mike Marr is our accountant and Mira is our finance manager. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mira technically lacks a CPI or CPA, sorry. Um, so she's not necessarily qualified to be a finance director, um, but we're working on getting her there educationally. Mm -hmm. So we still have Mike Mars, who's our uh, contract accountant. And so Mike Mars would deliver the financials to myself. We'd review them. I'd deliver them to Mira. Mira would, uh, break out the uh, summary financials and then Gretchen would come in and go over the summary financials with Mira and then it would be presented to the council. Okay. Well, I, I, I think, and this is my opinion, uh, I think both of them need some work and if we're going to do it, uh, maybe it does need to be addressed uh, under a charter type uh, approach at some point in time, but I think with the structure that we have right now, any one of us has the ability uh, to ask questions when we review or to be involved or to get together with you, Mike, uh, to get a better understanding. And I would really love for that to be open to any counselor who wants to know more about what's going on with the budget. 
you know, we have our updates. We have all of those things going on. We're going to have a budget meeting that all of us should participate in. And I would really just kind of uh, would want to leave that door open to any of us uh, who has a question and wants to know more uh, to communicate directly with you and Mira on the questions or concerns that any counselor might have if that is acceptable to everybody. I think, I think that makes sense, especially if, I, I mean, I, I certainly think that we need to kind of cultivate and develop the definition and the tasks of these executives. So, uh, and I, I think that might be a, a great topic for an upcoming executive session or work session. So uh, okay. I, I, I mean, yeah. I'm okay, happy. we'll work out the detail on that. Let's uh, eliminate those two uh, for now but uh, have some further discussion when we start uh, to have our, our workshop uh, for, uh, you know, in the very near future, okay? Okay. Okay, so we now ready we're ready for nominations? To, pardon me? Are we ready for nominations, Mayor? I think so. Let's All right, go. I proudly and excitedly nominate you, Ken Gibson, as our continued mayor of King City. If you so, will serve the pleasure of the people, please. I was second that. that. <laughs> I second that okay. too. <laughs> okay, so uh, um, do I need to accept before you vote, or do I accept <laughs> after you vote? You have yeah, no choice please. in the matter, so no. <laughs> The okay. Answer, yes. <laughs> so we have a motion and a second on the floor. And all in favor say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 All right. I'll even vote for myself. Okay. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Okay. Uh, number two, I uh, like to nominate Jamie Fender as uh, council president. And second. Uh, so all, uh, we need a second on that. Mike, I did it, I think. I jumped the gun. I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we need a vote. All in favor say aye. Raise your hand or. Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. All right, Jamie, you're still, you're still in. All right. And thank, thank you. you guys very much for having the confidence in the two of us. To lead, Jamie, you have no and... choice. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I would just thank both of you because you do put a lot of extra effort in, and uh, I guess everyone expects that of the mayor. But I think Jamie has done an extraordinary job too. I oh, agree. thank you. Here, here, <laughs> much, much appreciated. Thank you, Jamie, for your continued service, and I. Uh, I don't, smart you weren't on when I uh, congratulated uh, Kate and Shauna uh, for successfully becoming a member of this council. And uh, we have a great team. We're gonna do great things. We have a lot of work to do. Uh, but at the same time, uh, what I said was, is that we're all in this for one reason only. And one, that reason is to make King City the best it can possibly be to make it safe, prosperous, and also um, welcoming to everybody. So Absolutely. with that yes, being said, uh, we will move forward. Thank you guys Thank you. very much. Thank you for the vote of confidence. Uh, so- Congratulations. Um, uh, let's May I give right you congratulations, in. Jamie. Pardon me? Thanks, Mark. Okay, next item, 7.2. Oh, we, are we gonna do, uh, uh, the uh, committee appointments? Yes. Can we, uh, we have uh, TVF guest. and R up. Pardon me? Yeah, do you want to move TVF and R up? So that yes, I do, I do. Uh, let's move TVF and R up and yeah. then we'll get into the uh, uh, committee considerations afterwards, okay? So let's skip to 7.3. And uh, let's get going on that. Okay, well, thank you, Mayor Gibson and members. You're welcome, Cassandra, thank you for joining us. 
We appreciate uh, the opportunity to participate tonight and talk a little bit about fire code ordinance updates, but I thought you might be also interested in hearing about the vaccination work that we've been doing in conjunction with our county health partners. Absolutely. So, so it's good news, right? You, you started the meeting talking about the challenges that this past year with the pandemic have presented all of us and the difficulties that many who have either contracted the virus or impacted by job loss have had. We are really humbled and grateful to be part of getting us one step closer to normalcy. And while we um, still have a long road to to go where we're really excited. So uh, we have, we stood up our vaccination branch a couple of months ago in anticipation of this. We actually applied for a license with the Oregon Health Authority. Um, as of the end of today, uh, we have uh, administered almost 2,000 doses of vaccines, um, primarily uh, focused on police and fire personnel, including King City police officers. So we were happy to do that as well as some healthcare workers and other folks in that group 1A. By the end of the week, we should have about 2,800 doses administered. Our frontline personnel uh, were done a couple of weeks ago. So in the first week of February, we anticipate doing second doses. We do have enough for those second doses, but you've probably been tracking some of the news media to know that um, the supply from the federal government to all the states um, may have been a, a little overpromised. So uh, we'll still stay in constant contact with our county health partners and OHA. Um, and we just wanna be supportive in any way we possibly can to be able to help with that administration, which may um, evolve to support vaccination of teachers and other essential city and county health workers. So um, I think with that, um, oh, I just wanna let you know, we will still continue to wear that higher level of personal protective equipment on calls that you've probably seen our firefighter and paramedics wearing, um, because even if our folks have been vaccinated, it's possible that we could still um, give someone else uh, the, the vaccine or the, um, the virus. And so we're still going to be pretty conservative about our emergency mode of operations. And we will still be having our personnel wear masks when they're in the fire station and in uh, fire district facilities. And we do believe that that has paid off. We have had very few of our personnel contract COVID as far as we know. Um, and so we're thankful because you may have seen in Seattle and on the East Coast in particular, a lot of fire stations um, completely shut down. So uh, we are really thankful for our partnership with the cities, again, and the counties and um, your support. So we'll keep staff uh, posted on that. So unless there are any questions for me about COVID vaccinations or any other non-fire code uh, related business with TVFNR, then I'll probably pass it on to our fire marshal, Chief Steve Forster. Okay. Thank you. That's great news that you guys are doing so much along the vaccine line. I really do appreciate that. We're so grateful. So I'm gonna mute myself now and Chief Forster. Hi. Thank you. Uh, hi, hi, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, it's fantastic uh, to be with all of you tonight. It's great to actually get to listen in on a little bit of, uh, of your meeting. Sounds like you guys have a pretty good time uh, at your meeting. <laughs> Certainly try. Thank you for doing this, Steve. I appreciate it very much. Uh, it's, it's refreshing. So we appreciate it. Again, just super glad to be here. Uh, it's an honor to serve uh, King City. Tonight, uh, we just, we're here to respectfully request a uh, approval of a resolution approving of our fire code ordinance. This is a pretty standard uh, thing that we do. I think we were here probably six, seven years ago. We periodically go through and update our ordinance. Um, we're actually required by state law to have every city and county that we serve in um, pass a resolution approving of our ordinance. Uh, so for us, that's uh, the privilege of getting to go to and scheduling 15 uh, different cities and counties uh, to appear in front of. Um, and uh, you know, the, the, really the primary purpose of the, of, of the resolution is it's kind of the state's way to ensure that we as a special district, as a fire protection district, 
It's kind of the state's way of ensuring that we simply coordinate um, with the cities and counties that we serve and to make sure that um, you guys, you all sort of know what we do. Um, it's lost a little bit of its importance over the years in that um, there now is a pretty cleanly divided line between building codes and fire codes. Uh, so in the past, that was a lot, um, it was a lot less clear. And so there was a lot more reason to make sure that there was a high level of coordination. Um, but nonetheless, it's still a great opportunity to come before you, make sure you guys are aware of the ordinance um, and be able to ask any questions that you may have. Uh, our ordinance is, is pretty simple. We simply adopt the model uh, state fire code. We no longer have any amendments to the fire code. Um, we've worked to simply incorporate those right into the state language. That way it makes it a lot easier for businesses uh, in the public to comply with just a single code in, the, in Oregon rather than having um, fire codes that are your requirements that are unique within TVFNR. So our ordinance basically adopts the model fire code. Uh, we have some very minor updates throughout, just kind of periodic legal review. They always uh, like to suggest some minor changes. Uh, had a couple changes reflecting um, uh, current fees. Uh, and um, we did have one amendment that was in there previously just related to um, verifying of uh, automatic alarms, fire alarms. Um, but we were able to remove that because that now is embedded in the state code. Okay. And so with that, that's kind of really a brief overview. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you have on the ordinance or anything else, you know, sort of fire code, fire marshal related. Anyone? I'm just kind of scrolling through if anyone gets a chance to read it. If I'm going too fast, let me know and I'll go back. Or if anyone wants to see a particular section, I'll be happy to back to you. Yeah, I actually took time to read through it earlier today. Uh, and I don't remember a whole lot of it, but I did read it. <laughs> and I think it's pretty standard, as you said. That's our goal. We don't want anything in there. If there's anything that grabbed your attention too much, we were probably doing something wrong. So no, there was, there <laughs> was mission accomplished. That, that's for sure. I think that's all there is, just the three pages, right, Steve? And then the presentation page. That's it, yes. Yeah. So and then your resolution, really straightforward, just kind of recaps uh, the requirement under state law to adopt it, and that's about it. Okay, so um, Mike, do you need to read the uh, resolution uh, to make it official? I, I or, don't I mean, just, necessarily need to, or we could just pass it by resolution number and then I Oh, can yeah, yeah, I think that'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's really what I meant. I didn't mean the whole thing. Oh, I'll move. I want to hear Mike read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the ordinance number, just to be sure. Right, the kids will start screaming any minute now. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then I move, it would be moved to adopt resolution number R-2021-01, correct? That's second. Okay. All in favor, say aye, raise the hand so we can do, or do you know what, uh, need aye. a specific count? You're muted, Mike. You're muted. You're still muted, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on but mine is running very slow. all right i've got everyone but smart so i need uh i okay there we go and i have uh, councillor fender moved and councillor thompson second that is correct okay all right thank okay. you steve and cassandra cassandra or cassandra cassandra thank you for coming all Thanks right, for having Steve us. Cassandra, thank you. We you really want our help it. with committee appointments? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, we're going to take your leave, but thank you so much. Okay, and you guys stay safe, and thank you for all that you do for yeah. our community. Truly thank appreciate you. it. Take care. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for having thank us. Steve. Have a great night. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Okay, so now we're going to go back to uh, committee appointments. All right.
Right. Or do you want to just do that second reading on that ordinance? Oh, well, we can do that. Yeah. And really we can, fast. Actually, and then we'll I don't it. mind doing the committee stuff last. We okay. can get through all the rest of this and just uh, put that at the end. Okay. Because I think that second reading is just by title only, right, Ronnie? All right. Let me... And I'll be happy to read the second reading on this, if you like, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Mike. All right, so this is the second reading of Ordinance 2020-02, an ordinance amending the City of King City's Municipal Code, Chapter 15, Buildings and Construction. That is it. All right, I just have a quick question for the three new counselors. Counselors, have you watched the video on this ordinance from last month? I was present, I believe, and okay, I perfect. think that this and is the work Mark, that okay, perfect. on the Planning Commission. All right, perfect. And then Shauna was there, and Smart was there. Okay, perfect. So all three of you can vote. Yep. So if you recall, we had a public hearing at our last meeting. There wasn't a lot of comments. Actually, I don't think there was any comments from the public in general. Um, if there's any questions, or we can just move to a vote. I think uh, it's well understood. Need a motion? Yep, we need a motion and a second to move to adopt. I'll move to adopt ordinance number 0-2020-02. Second. All in favor? Uh, can I get a roll call? Aye. Say aye. I need a roll call. Aye. Uh, I need a roll call. Uh, Mayor Gibson, Councillor Moore, Councillor Thompson, Councillor Fender, Councillor Platt, Councillor Paulson, uh, Councillor Ocholi. Aye. All right. That's unanimous. 7-0. All right, thank you. And now I think uh, that was the last order of business, right, Ronnie? Or new business? No, there's an IGA. Oh, the IGA. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Mike. Let's go ahead and do the IGA, and then and then we'll do the. So the IGA. The IGA is the intergovernmental agreement for uh, the community psyche grant. We really need to get on this thing. We're kind of running out of time to spend this money. Um, this is that uh, community art program. Um, bear with me here as I try to find it. In this. Yeah, it's all the way at the end, I think. Still in the building code here. So Mike, did I read it right that they're grouping us together with the city of Tiger and the city of Durham? That's correct, yeah. And so we'll have about 47,000 to spend on our art project. For the uh, three cities combined? Just us. No, just for us, yeah. Yeah, just oh. for us. But we need to expend the money by, I think, the end of March. Oh, okay. So we don't have much time to turn this around and get it out the door. We do have a list of uh, artists. And we do, I think, Councillor Thompson, you were in on some of those meetings. So you know kind of uh, the efforts that they put in on the front end of this to get it all moving and, and get it going. We still kind of need a... A general location or a site um, and that'd be really good to have something in mind by our next meeting. Um, Did you find out whether or not it had to be a mural? Uh, we were thinking it could be like a mosaic or a mural. Okay. So something of that along along those lines where say the community could come together and paint like individual tiles and we could put the tiles up. Something of that effect. Yeah, I remember the idea of doing the mosaic bench, and then we could have a bench maybe in the park or yeah. somewhere like that that we all kind of create together, or more than one bench. If we forty-seven thousand dollars, yeah, that'd be a yeah. very expensive. Yeah. Bench. Several benches. I mean, we could do. We do have a backstop that's just created down there that Dave just finished. We also have the wall on Fisher Road that we could do a nice mosaic on. Um, we we do have options. We. We have that little uh, triangle park at 
King George and Queen Elizabeth as well, that we could maybe erect something there. Um, we have at least three options, four possibly that I can think of. So I like the idea of something at the park, and I also like the idea of something when at any point of entrance into the city. Um, yeah, that would be great. Um, I really like the idea of doing something at the corner of Beef Bend and 99W. Yeah. But we're not quite there yet. Right. Um, I think after, post master plan, post TSP, we might actually be able to do some of the fun projects at the entrance points. You know, one, of the things, uh, one of the things that I found out that Durham is doing, uh, they are doing it via banners all over the, the city. So, you know, artwork, specific artwork with different themes on it uh, is what they decided to do uh, via banners uh, hung on light poles, the same way we did uh, for the 50th celebration. Uh, so that's another option uh, that would, uh, you know, basically uh, it would be visible all over the city if we had money uh, left over and we want to do something along those lines along with um, maybe a mural in the park. You know, the other thing at the park when you kind of uh, mayor across this, you know, kind of near from where you are is almost like a natural amphitheater. Yeah. And at the bottom of that, it would be so awesome to put something there so there could be performances or, you know, like almost a little stage or a little area or um, I know Viva, Viva and I have talked about this a lot about, you know, creating something that then could, could uh, entice more artists to come along. So, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, putting in a stage or something like that, I think is hard, but even if it was just a cement mosaic slab uh, that, you know, then people could use to set up a little performance. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad idea. Right there at the bottom. Right there, you know, just the, where the natural slope is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, outside my window. That'd be perfect. Right, I, right outside window. Yep. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, Mayor, all my ideas, I've, I've given you a library. Now I want to give you a stage. <laughs> and I love it. I love <laughs> it. It makes me feel very special. <laughs> I love um, that idea. Yeah. I mean, so how much time do we have, Mike? We have about uh, two months, essentially. Okay. Uh, two months, but it's too much to spend the money. We can we can basically hire the consultant to do the work and pay for the materials and and then it can be paid for sort of in, in, in right. effect. So, so who who is there a team of people working on this or how's this working? There's a there's a group of people from uh, Tiger, Walton, Sherwood. Uh, Durham ourselves uh, that basically just kind of came together because there was about I want to say $250,000 of this money that initially came out uh, from Washington County for the South County areas to spend mm -hmm. and then those kind of got divvied up by population right so, um, and, and there were some other factors too. There was a base calculation for what it would cost for materials and things of that nature and to get the community involved. And then uh, there was additional for community involvement event. So, okay. But so, I, but I really do like uh, Councilor Fender's concept. Yeah, I like that idea too. I don't know if you guys saw Viva's comment in the chat, but she said there's a great example of the a Rotary Park in Kaiser that has a great stage. There's also one at the Champoy uh, Park as well. But I, you know, we've we've always kind of thought, you know, we had um, before COVID and hopefully again after COVID, uh, it, that little area worked really well for our, um, you know, our reading in the park event where we had like, I don't know, 120 people, but people just sat there kind of around and uh, we read the books there and- mm -hmm. so is there any way, I mean, within King City, it almost sounds like this is a perfect thing to hand off to the uh, King City Foundation uh, to work it through and come up with a proposal. Is that- We is don't that, have that much time. Yeah. Pardon me? 
we don't have that much time. We got to get going on it now. Um, like if we're going to get it done, we got to get it out the door as soon as possible. Well, how okay. much is how much time, Mike? Uh, we have until March to spend the money, bring them under contract. It has to be in line with the, um, with this ag agreement with Tiger. Also, also has to go out for an RFP. County. What's that, Ronnie? Also has to go out for an RFP and that can take up to 30 days. Well, we're going to make it faster than that. I think we yeah. should look for a grant for the stage outside of this. I think it is accepted. I think we don't have the time. Like Mike's saying, you know, there's not the bandwidth, but the idea is great. And there are other grant opportunities out there. There's some <clears throat> that the uh, Metro sent me some references. Okay. All right. So uh, what's the plan, Mike? Have, have we talked with any of our citizens? I don't know that I've heard anything like. Once this is, yeah, once this is done, we're going to do a blast out to everyone to try to get some involvement. Okay. Um, but we need to have some sort of project in mind and the base kind of established on what we want to do. Um, the things that the group has come up with, like I mentioned earlier, is they have artists on hand that can do a um, mosaic from the tile, from like little tiles, or we can do a mural. Those are the artists that we have. And those were the that's what we have a lot. That's what we have lined up that we can get moving fast. Okay. I love the mosaic idea and getting involvement of the the community to all come together to participate and do a piece of it. Mm -hmm. So I think we could line that up, right? We don't need to organize all of that. I think doing something like that, I think, is the is a great little thing. Right. We have and examples of what type because. A, a bench, I couldn't imagine they would spend 47000 on a bench. That just seems um, colossally expensive. Right. So, but you could do a wall. Like, um, you could do, like, a short pony wall that's, like, you know, two and a half feet tall or something. That's It's tall enough that you could just, you know, sit up on it if you wanted to. Um, it gives what? you a place to see it, and then we could put the tiles on it. What what about the so down at the park the, where the walkway crosses the creek, uh, coming away from the the um, playground there? Mm -hmm. What about two short concrete, like I said, pony walls that go along there and use both sides for the mosaic? Then it also has the component of kind of adding some safety to that, with little kids running around not falling down the embankment. I like that idea. I like that too. I'm I'm fine with that if that's what we want to do. That sounds like a great idea, in fact. I think it's a good idea. All right. Then we'll move forward with that. So we're talking two pony walls that are probably what two and a half feet yeah, tall, like three feet two tall. All at most. All right. Um, I'll check into I imagine is there gonna let me just ask my engineers make sure that there's not some sort of safety protocol since it's over a creek. And uh, if everything pans out, we'll move forward with that. If, if not, then I'd say we just kind of move that concept down around the corner near like the playing field or something. Right. Or along yeah. the edge. And then we have a, a pony wall that's also acts as a bench, you know, that we could do a tile mosaic on, or we have it over by the basketball court or, or right. even over by uh that uh, can that near Ken's area there at the the north end. So either any of those locations would be fine in my book. I, I think the park is the ideal location, and if we can find the spot, I uh, uh, start with what Micah is talking about, and then if that doesn't work out, we look for another location within the park to do what we're doing. And I think around you know around the gazebo. I know I know. Viva had suggested like a horseshoe track too. So like even uh, kind of outlining an area that could have, uh, you know, so, I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff. There is a question in the chat um, asking if, if there's extra funds, can that be used to the community of the walls and benches shouldn't cost that much, so. Yeah, we can use, um, there's. With the grant you like, 
usually with the grant, you have to use it on what you say, and then you have to prove afterwards that you used it on what you said you were going to use it on. So, yeah. uh, but it might be interesting to see, you know, if, you know, if we, if we did something like. We can do like an ice cream feed too, to expend whatever money we have left, you know, oh, just like that. Yeah. Or, or yeah. stickers or whatever. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, any other questions or concerned about this? Um, I just wanted to weigh in since I was kind of part of this project. Um, I still like the idea of doing benches around the city. There can be several um, in the park, around the park. There can be some in our business, like downtown area of King City that we as a community create. So the bench, obviously we would buy a bench, um, a sturdy bench. They're not cheap, but, um, and then what my idea was is that community members can pick up a tile and a paint set from different um, businesses in King City or and or we could have a table at the park on certain days passing out little kits and then the tiles would be taken home and the community members would paint their tile. They'd be returned to a business at, on a certain date and then they would be given to the artists to um, fire them and, and put them on the bench and so that way when the project is done, the community members can search around the city to find which bench their tile ended up on. Um, and it would beautify the city in several locations and also bring a sense of community and joy. And really um, the, the whole point of the resiliency project um, is to kind of uplift everyone. And so I think it'd be a really great way to kind of uplift the community by bringing some joy to everyone. Um, by seeing a little piece of their art around the city. Yeah, I, I really love the idea of uh, getting people involved, and and I also like the idea of having having artwork, you know, throughout the entire city. I I like that idea. I think Mike, um, you know, I guess what's hard is until we know pricing, right? Like, I think is it going to cost $10,000 to do some benches and then we have more money to play with so we could still do some stuff down at that park? I mean, I think it's hard to, under so if you need some help volunteer, I'm happy to kind of help volunteer. I can come in next week um, and do some stuff with you or, you know, do remote to kind of look into stuff. And I'm sure everyone is willing to kind of pitch in to get some information. Cause I think this is a phenomenal opportunity and there's so it many, is. That we can spend this, so. Uh, and, and, you know, I do like uh, what uh, uh, Sean is talking about. I just want us to be in agreement that we can do uh, some of these things, one or two or three or whatever the case may be. And I think it's so worthwhile and such a great opportunity. So, uh, well, Mike, you have some ideas and they need to be priced out and uh, a determination has to be, if we're going to go with Shauna's idea, there needs to be community involvement and there needs to be also a way of communicating that uh, opportunity. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of work to be done along those lines. Uh, so we need to, you guys need to figure out how to do that. Mike, um, so is, is it my understanding that we have a list of artists that we have to use, correct? We have a list of artists that are kind of vetted by the grant, by the group. Um, so maybe we can contact them to find out how much these ideas would cost, right? Is that is that the sequence, how it would work as far as what's the next step to figure um, out how to work well, within our budget? There's a, uh, essentially there's like an, there's a couple that do murals and a couple that do mosaics. So that's what we have to work with. So okay. if we're talking about doing uh, mosaic benches, I imagine that needs to be like a concrete bench. I, I don't I don't know. So I, I don't I'm, I'm not sure how we go about that. You know, if we'd have to go track down concrete benches and chase it around. If it's, if it's a wall, it's easy. Like I have the wall on Fisher Road that we could do. I, I could call a concrete company and have them come out and pour a wall tomorrow. You know, there's like, but benches are, are they're different. It's a different animal. So I got to figure out how to do that. And 
Um, we got to figure out where we're going to put them. Put them. Uh, we can definitely find places to put benches around the city. Um, I just got to figure out what's the right material, how we do the mosaics if we do little tiles, and how those get placed on benches or how that works. Um, it's just different. It's different than what was scoped. So I'm not saying it, it can't be done. It, it can definitely be done. It's just going to be a different process. Okay. And, and so also theme is very important. What, has there been any conversation a lot about what the theme should be? Uh, yeah. That's already been laid out. It's called the community resiliency. Thing. Okay. But what does that look like in terms of art? They have a, they have a logo and everything. So we have to use that in whatever we do. Is that, is that right? Yeah. That's not my understanding. I think that logo is what, if we're using, if we're um, advertising the resiliency project on social um, platforms, you know, um, so I think that's our, what the, the intent of the logo was. I don't think that the logo necessarily has to be what our art is. No, that yeah, I, that's correct. Yeah, so okay. when we just have to, when we do our public information uh, blast and we start getting people out there, we have to have the you know community resiliency logo like proudly sponsored and like that this is uh, community resilience or community psyche grant and community resilience in, in Sir Washington County and the state of Oregon. We have to have those all clearly identified and labeled. But the art project itself or what that looks like is totally different. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be it's all about mental psyche right they're trying to to create joy and happiness for all of our community members and so i think the focus of the artwork itself should just be something that creates joy whether it's a sunshine and bird mural and those or, or whatever the case may be. you know everybody gets a tile and they paint a flower and then you have a bench that's covered in all these different beautiful flowers or something that just um is uplifting i think to the community i think that as a whole is what the project is about. Um, so we could do lots of different things with it. We could do one thing. My concern about a mural like on a wall is graffiti. And I'm not sure how to get past that. And I mean, obviously it's the same concern with benches too, but I'm picturing a wall like on Fisher Road or something, you know, we've just spent all this money to have this beautiful mural painted and then somebody comes up and mm. ruins it. And that's, that's my concern. Like the pony wall is a little bit, better because of the fact that, I mean, you're not going to have, I mean, it, it's the same kind of uh, uh, an exposure that you would have to a bench as well. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, it's not a huge like canvas, like a six foot wall is. It's, uh, you know, something low to the ground that would be similar to a, a bench as far as a target, if you will. Yeah. I wonder if, and I, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I just wonder if like the tiles, like if you did a pony wall or a bench or whatever, if the if the um, glazing on it is kind of better for removing graffiti, I'm not sure if that's a thing or not. But you know, it's not as porous. I guess is what I'm trying to get at, as like a wall would be, a concrete wall. But um, I think maybe what we should do is have some conversations with a couple of artists, and I'm, I'd be happy to do that, Mike. Yeah, um, so I say maybe Shauna, maybe you should contact like if you could contact the you know the mosaic artist and just find out like what's involved and what's the material and what you know like pricing and then mike if you can talk to you know your engineer guy and dave and look go down and look at the park about you know another i don't know if you guys have seen but there's um also like mosaic um like game you know like checkers or chess boards or places where people can play together and i'm just trying to think of things that will bring like the young folk and kind of our senior together at, down at the park to have joy. That's why I kind of like the idea of supporting, acti you know, promoting activity of inclusivity and community, I think is a cool, is a cool thing so that the artwork becomes. Um, and, and I agree with hiring. all, I agree with all that's being said. My, my concern is how to get this off the ground and, and running. We have the what, what I mean, whether it be a bench, a wall, or uh, something in the park, and then the theme, 
a decision has to be made on the theme of what we're talking about. And there's that third piece is that we want this to be a community involved process. There's a whole lot of work that needs to be done in order to get those three things done in a very, very short period of time. So, and my concern is who's doing what? You know, if we have volunteers like Shauna and Jamie and someone else like Diva or whoever from the um, um, uh, foundation to assist Mike in trying to get this thing done, because Mike and Ronnie, you guys are gonna have to price it out and figure out the feasibility of what we're talking about doing. Uh, so a decision on theme and locations and uh, what kind of activity, I mean, what kind of wall or bench or whatever, those things have to be made right away. Those decisions have to right. be made. Right, so I, I'm kind of thinking, one, how many benches? Two, we could potentially do both a pony wall at the park somewhere and a bench and then have the bench be relocated somewhere um, or benches be relocated elsewhere to wherever we're going to put them, which I don't know if we even have a home necessarily for them right now, but we'd have to try to figure out some area or land or get a landowner to sign on to us putting it in there where, wherever we would go. So, um, but I don't see why we could potentially do, it depends on how much the benches are, but uh, you could probably do a, you know, 15 or 20 foot small pony wall and then do mosaic tiles along the pony wall at the park and then have a couple benches there. Um, thinking maybe like, you know, three or four benches maybe like get those, uh, maybe like the concrete stone benches maybe. Uh, and then I think you can tile those, although I'd have to check with a, you know, a tile person and see. So Mike, if you want to shoot me over the um, name and phone number of one or two of those mosaic artists, yeah. I'd be happy to reach out to them and have that conversation um, regards to um, what type of bench would be best um, for doing this project. Um, maybe kind of get a ballpark figure of, you know, doing a wall, doing a bench, kind of what, what they would charge for it. Um, so at least I can like just get started on that. And, and I'm trying Mike. to go off memory. Ronnie, do you, I, I wish we had Dave on the line because I think him and I looked at like concrete benches not too long ago. But I want to say they're, well, like two to 3,000 or something per bench. Is that? Yeah, that's about there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's somewhere between a thousand and two thousand. I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. It depend, depends on what kind of brand you get and um, kind of the the, uh, the diameters and. Okay. So could we just pour a big old block of concrete and call it a bench? <laughs> like it doesn't have to have a back on it. It doesn't have to be a you know. A bench, but if we say it's a bench, it's a bench. <laughs> All right. So, uh, can we? So, let me make sure I'm clear. You're going to be working on looking at a pony wall and benches, and then try to figure out uh, the mosaic piece along with the benches. And would the pony wall have mural or mosaic? I think they would all be mosaic. So, everyone would end up getting a tile, mm -hmm. you know, they would paint their tile and that tile would go on the, the bench or the wall. Okay. And then the question, so if that's the direction that we're kind of leaning, where do we want to put the little wall? Do we want to do it over the creek? Do we want to do it over by the playing field so people can sit and watch playing activity in the field? Do we want to put it over on the other side near the hill? I like the idea about the creek, but I also worry that people would use it to climb on and actually want to jump off of the top of it. <laughs> it would have kind of the opposite effect. Um, Although it's not a drop directly into the creek, it's just a, 
to the embankment. So I don't know that that necessarily presents more danger than is already there to begin with. And so it felt like it, it wouldn't provide a platform to jump into the six inch deep creek. Okay, where where are you are you talking about? Right next to the playground, where the walkway goes through to the um, the tennis court. Uh, to the tennis court from the playground. Oh right, okay. I was I was thinking you, that. you cross you cross okay. two culverts going right. Right, right there. And it would be awesome to keep people from walking down there anyway. Yep. Yeah. My my only concern would be environmental, and okay. uh, and then if we do put that, what are we restricting our access? Like, are we still going to be able to get equipment and stuff through there? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. The, oh, so I mean, for, that, the for the Fourth of July. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Well, that walkway though is it, unless it's reducing the actual width of the walkway. That walkway is the width of. Uh, larger than a lane of, of traffic. So mm -hmm. I think it would restrict too much unless unless you were actually like building it on top of the walkway. And you would have to. We, we would have to build it on top of the walkway. Okay. Otherwise, we'd have to do a whole wetland mitigation and yeah. impact. Well, also for drainage too, because you don't want to, we can't create like a ponding effect too with the pony wall. You know, we have to figure out how to have egress of water there. Yeah, it's a little half circle hole in the bottom. You and I and Dave should go walk around the park and then we can circulate like the top three location ideas that we can come up with as far as what's constructible, what's, you know, all of these things. Cause I think it's kind of hard to sit here and play it on our mind, but yeah. you know, I'd love to walk with you and Dave down at the park and then we can circulate an email and the, you know, and let everyone know here is the top three areas that we think and then people can circulate yeah and and also uh, we need to look at uh, where uh, the benches might be located uh we have that one spot in original king city where the gazebo is and people walk their dogs along there it'd be nice to have a bench where they can sit uh before they get to the gazebo or on the opposite end of that uh green space where the uh, uh gazebo is uh so yeah Okay, so I like all these ideas uh, and I'm in favor and I will fully support it, uh, but we got to make some decisions. Okay. And it looks like Viva, Viva and I and, uh, and Annie will have an offline conversation about uh, bringing a stage into that little amphitheater then. Okay. And, and Shauna, you're going to work on the bench side of it and the mosaic and Mike. You're going to look at the feasibility of uh, the uh, wall concept that Mike might have talked about. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so say we do a um, one foot by two foot by 20 foot wall, and then we have four benches, Shauna. I, I have no idea how much the artist is going to charge for per bench so um but as yeah i think we could scatter benches all i mean i think adding benches to king city park would be um would be great give giving people a place to sit and rest sit and watch you I know like kids it. playing and things like that um and it's another way to encourage kind of you know the older generation to come to the park knowing that they'll have a place to sit um, so I think we could definitely scatter four benches and then if we wanted to put more around the rest of the city, we could do that too. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where we would put a wall. I agree that that is probably too narrow right there, um, uh, where that Creek is, even though I think it's a great idea. I think it's really going to limit, especially like 4th of July, people bringing their golf carts or whatever, um, on the, on the path. That's going to be well, really tight. It would limit like the large truck that's bringing the because it's it's wide enough for like two to three or two golf carts to go past each other in there already. Oh. Well, we'll, we'll look at the feasibility of it. I mean, let's okay. just yeah. determine whether or not it's feasible. I also like your idea of like a wall back towards like the backstop area yeah. too. No, I, I keep thinking about that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. The backstop down along that location. Yep. Right. Okay. All right, all right. I think we, we have, have a game plan. Conversation surrounding this. So we've got a number of benches. We have a wall. 
We're doing a mosaic. We'll get rolling on it. We're doing, and we'll get it out the door. But right now we have an IGA that needs approval to do it. Okay. All right. So we need a motion. I, I, did everybody get a chance to look at the IGA? I mean, I read it. I don't think there's anything I'm concerned about. So anybody else? Well, we need a motion. Hello. <laughs> move to approve. I don't have the number or I don't have it in front of me. My screen just went. So uh, is, do I have to reference a number? Or can I just say I move to approve the, the IGA? Yeah, I think you can just move to approve the IGA. Let me just, I don't think there's a. Yeah, there's not a number. number. I move to approve the IGA. Thank you. I second. <laughs> <laughs> who was the All second? Donna? Say, uh, Donna. Who was the second? Donna. <laughs> okay. Okay. All, All right. Say aye. 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 All right. I've got okay. unanimous. Right, Mike. I didn't. I can't see your arm. I, you I said aye. Yeah. All right. All right. I've got seven zero unanimous. All right. Okay. All right. Next on the agenda, then we uh, finished the IGA, we did uh, the resolution. So now we need to talk about uh, committee assignments. Now, you guys, uh, are you going to put that on the screen? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to put it up right now. Okay. Yeah, hey, Mike, I have the Word doc, so don't worry about that. All right. You have a Word doc? Are you going to share it, Ronnie? Or? No, just use the PDF there. It's right there. All right. And um, I'll use the word so I can type in everybody's info. All right. Okay, so the first one is the uh, Washington County Consolidated Communications Association. So we need a primary and an alternate on these. Uh, Who had been? Good? I was doing what last time too? Yeah, Ronnie, do you have the last time? I do not. It got corrupted. Got corrupted. Well, yeah. somebody in this room must know who was on it. Speak up. Who was on it? Hello? You want to just table this until it's maybe next time? And then we can get the list of uh, folks that were on it. I was going to say, Ronnie, you emailed it to all of us after right. we discussed. I've got it via email somewhere as well. Yeah, I think we can go ahead and get it done. There are going to be some meetings coming up. Uh, yeah, like, uh, there's there's meetings next week too. Yeah. So I Metro is coming up next week. And this is Ernie. I, I know that I was on part of that black. Wasn't this Ernie's assignment and then Yes. Uh, there's there's two bo there's two boards to it. There is the the BOC, which is a council, at, which is council. And then there's the technical committee, which is Hapala and Brian, or whoever chief decides to send. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's get rolling here. Uh, so Ernie, you must have been involved in that particular one, huh? Yes, I was trying to speak and got talked over there. So yeah, <laughs> I was part of part of this, and I'm on you know, multiple committees that go to lack of meetings. Okay, so and who would who would your alternate be? Brian. Okay, so uh, is somebody going to be documenting this? Okay, Bonnie's got it. Hold on, okay. hey, we need to clarify. There's two lack of committees. There's the board, which is the BOC, and the technical committee users. Technical committee users is Chief and Brian. And they're also the board, aren't they? Now, the board looks like it was, when we did it back in September, that one got, uh, looks like Shauna was the primary or somebody else with the last name of Thompson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe there needs to be an explanation. What is the real difference between the two? Who can tell us that? 
The board is the political side, the uh, technical is the staffer side. And uh, the BOC uh, is the policy makers. Yeah, it's their board of commissioners there. And what would we be expected to do? Are we, do we become a voting member on this? We're we're not a voting member. We're a we're a uh, small city share. There's uh, like three or four communities, and there is only one vote. Um, I think the member is out of the voting member is out of banks. Usually, banks fire. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at now. We're not we're not a full member yet. We're close, but uh, we're not yet. Okay. All right. So, uh, Shauna, do you remember volunteering for this? I don't remember volunteering, but I'm happy to um, explore whatever it is. Washington County Consolidated Communication Association. Mm -hmm. Does and anybody know what that means, though? That's that's the 911 center. Gotcha. Happy to stay on the board and start participating in it. For purposes of making this go a little faster, um, Micah, can I have you read off primary? I, I have it now. Okay. Well, okay. If somebody can read off the primary and alternate so that we can move it forward a little faster. Yeah. And wherever the opening Thompson are, and I mean, What? Thompson and Hapala was BOC. Was BOC primary and alternate? Yes. Okay, who is the technical committee, primary and alternate? Uh, Papua and Pollard. Do you want me to share my screen? Because I have it pulled up. No, it's okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, are we good with this? Well, somebody share it. I'm going to stop sharing mine. If somebody can share the list, then we can get through it. So either Sean or Ronnie, whoever wants it. All right, let's roll. Let's go. I can't share it. It says dis host disabled participant. Get into my email and I'll share it. Thank you. All right. I'm excited for meetings to start up again, though, because I have... It's been like, there haven't been a lot of meetings for the last few months. <laughs> Seems like I have one every day. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I have to spread it around. <laughs> Mayor, I'm in meetings all day too. That's just not the fun kind. It's right? just not the fun kind. Huh? It's the ones I get paid for, you know. Right. Okay, here we go. All right. All right. Okay, there it is. Okay, that looks great. So, that is exactly what it said. And I, the technical side was Pollard. Is, uh, you remember that? And so he's still good with that, Ernie? Yeah, that's fine. Jeremy just kind of, he explains all the technical stuff to me so I can sound somewhat intelligent when I'm talking about it. Okay. All right. And let's move to everybody good with that? Shauna, you'll learn more as we go along. Yeah, I, I just have one question. Yes. So for something like this, um, how do I get notified of meetings and things like that? Well, I, you know, it's something that we could probably get forwarded to you. We, we have to, uh, you know, everything's still virtual that's going on right now. The, uh, they've got a new director that's going to be coming in and the board with everything that's going on because there's going to be a uh, budget committee meetings coming up here real quick and so it's something that uh, we'll just have to get you on the email list okay so can you forward that to me then and typically what happens just so the rest of the counselors are aware is we email out our representative to these committees to the committees themselves and they add you into their mailing list so that you should automatically get the info from them that makes sense okay thank you Okay, sounds good. Okay, are we good with that one? Yes. Okay, let's move on to WCCC. Uh, that I am the primary. I go uh, every single time. 
and I'm a voting member of the Washington County Coordinating Committee. And this is all about transportation and uh, funding for uh, different uh, transportation um, needs. So uh, Gretchen was the alternate. Uh, I think it would be a great uh, thing for the council president uh, to be involved in. Okay. Yeah, at noon, uh, noon meeting. Yep, that's that works for me. Yes, okay. uh, and it typically is this really the second Monday okay. uh, of the month at noon. All right. When we were doing it physically, it was at the library, uh, Beaverton Library, but uh, everything has been virtual and it will probably continue for quite some time that way. I would imagine, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, Roy Rogers uh, is the chair of that uh, committee. Perfect, yep. Now, Mike, uh, you do the uh, technical piece, right? Yeah, so uh, we usually go to the technical piece. It's usually myself, and if I can't go, then I ask Dave to go. Okay, all right. Sounds good. Uh, no need for change there. Uh, so Washington County Community uh, Development Block Grant, that's uh, Micah. Yeah, and I'd like to stay on that, especially since we're voting next week on uh, the grants. Okay. Yeah. And I'm happy to stay as the alternate if uh, Micah can't ever go. I think um, that one, it is, uh, you kind of need to have experience on it. So uh, I think someone who's been on it before is, needs to be the alternate. So I'm happy to continue with that. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, okay, moving right along. Any questions or concerns about that one? All right, we'll move over to the Metropolitan Area Communications Commission, monitors cable and telecommunications. As it stands now, it's uh, Platt and Paulson. I'm, I'm happy to stay as the alternate on that as well. Dave? I had to get unmuted, sorry about that. I'm okay to stay on that. Okay, all right, sounds good. Uh, the water board, uh, I think uh, we made a, a good decision on this. Uh, Smart is the uh, primary and Jamie is the alternate. Yes, I'm happy to stay as the primary. And okay, I didn't now, submit. Uh, uh, let's, let's think about this now. The name that is not on here yet is uh, Kate Moore. So uh, we really have to think about whether or not, Jamie, you cannot overload yourself being yeah. on too many of these. Sure. And I'm happy to I'll give this one up to Kate if she wants to take it. Learn all I need to learn about water. <laughs> <laughs> and Smart can tell you all that you need to know. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll go ahead and contact them and submit uh, your name, Kate. That way you'll be on the, on the notification um, emails. That sounds great. Thank you. Okay, sounds great. Uh, the Southwest Corridor, uh, yes, I'm uh, involved in that. Now, uh, I don't know how much activity is gonna be going on with that. Uh, Shauna, you are the alternate as it stands today, and I think that's a good one for you to be involved in. Uh, it looks like there isn't gonna be another uh, Southwest Corridor uh, transportation type package until 2022, but uh, there will be a whole lot of conversation going on uh, in relationship to what's happening with Metro. And uh, so it's, it's an interesting dynamic because when we look at Metro Council, uh, Ronnie, can you uh, scroll up or down or whichever way so I can see the Metro Council? Metro Council, and the relate, oh, no, 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 not that far. Stay on the first page. I think there's a relationship between the Southwest Corridor plan and Metro Council. So I think there needs to be a relationship uh, that uh, the uh, primary and alternate need to establish uh, between those two, Metro Council 
and uh, the uh, uh, Southwest Corridor Plan. And so, I'll just chime in, Mayor, that this is a, a fun one for anyone that's transportation minded. Right. And that likes to look at transportation alternatives throughout the metro region yep. and get involved in that stuff. It's a great opportunity. It really is. So uh, as it stands now, we need a replacement for Gretchen. And, uh, and really, I would like for somebody else to be the alternate on this mm -hmm. because it's going to be a great learning experience as we move forward. I, I'd be happy to be part of that. I have uh, a background in some transportation, so that would be, uh, I think, pretty fun. So which would you like to be the uh, primary on, the Southwest Corridor or the Metro Council? Um, I, I, I think I'd be, I would be fine with, with either one personally. Um, so uh, I would I'll, recommend connecting them, Mayor. Okay, I, I, understand. I understand. What I was suggesting is that maybe the person who is the uh, primary for the Southwest Corridor could be the alternate for the Metro Council. So, uh, Micah? Yeah. Uh, um, why don't you take the uh, Southwest Corridor as the primary? Okay. And Shauna, do you still want to be the alternate on this? I will, unless there's somebody else that uh, maybe like Micah has a, more of a background in transportation. I'm, well, sure. I, I'm talking about the alternate. Micah sure. will be the primary. Yeah, I'm happy to be the alternate. Okay. And then I'm going to skip down to the Metro Council because I really think, uh, Jamie, you need to be the primary on this. Jamie? Okay, yep, okay. I'm happy to be the primary. Okay. And There's also MTAC. I, I hate to jump ahead, but um, if we have Councillor Thompson on the alternative for the Southwest Corridor Plan, do we want to have her as the primary then with MTAC, the Metro Transportation? I, I don't even know if you can do it, Shauna, but it's... Yeah. Honey, can I have you scroll down to MTAC? My chief of staff just, just said so, yes. Just so you guys, you guys aren't looking at the updated information with the current dates and all that, so. Okay, we understand that. Uh, we're, uh, okay. There's a oh. JPEC right here. Oh, okay, right. So Mike, what, what was your point there? Sorry. Um, my point is that the uh, Metro JPEC Transportation Group works a lot on the Southwest Corridor. Oh, okay. So whoever's in the Southwest Corridor group should probably be into the Metro JPAC. And maybe it's a reverse role. So maybe whoever's the primary on the Southwest Corridor is the alternate on the JPAC and vice versa, you know? Okay, I got you. That way everyone gets a chance to participate and is involved in an equal level of just throwing it out there. And the meetings for the JPAC is uh, every third Thursday every month, 7.30 to 9 p.m. A.M.? Oh, sorry, A.M. Yeah. Okay. So, Micah, back to what we were talking, that combination of Micah and I, I really I would like to see um, maybe Kate be involved in this somehow. Uh, so we need to figure out that combination between are, you guys. Are you on the JPAC still? Well, we need to finish the conversation of the transfer, uh, the, uh, what we say, the Southwest Corridor. Micah is the alternate on that. And Shauna is the, I mean, Micah is the primary and Shauna is the uh, alternate. And, and then, then on Metro, uh, I really kind of think it would be a good combination of uh, Jamie and Kate on the Metro Council. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. 
Anybody have concern over that? Okay, and then for JPAC, that combination that Mike is talking about uh, with maybe uh, Shauna being the uh, uh, alternate and Micah being, I mean, the primary and Micah being the alternate, is that what you were suggesting, Mike? Yeah, it just depends on if that's uh, viable for their schedules. You know? Right. No, I understand. I don't. I, some of these are really like right in the middle of the day. They're not always viable. So yeah, that that time for the JPAC one doesn't really work well for me and my family. So so may, maybe it's something we pass off to somebody else. You know, it's just an idea. Yeah. Okay. And any it's it's hard for any working person. Okay. So this is what I'll do. I. Why don't I take the JPAC? My name is already on it. I'll do JPAC. And uh, Dave, you already have yourself as an alternate. Can you stick with that? Okay. Okay, I think that's reasonable. Okay. We need to go back up. We, uh, the LOC, Small Cities Group, Micah, that's you and SMART. Uh, we can uh, stay with that, right? Yeah, that's fine. But I, we haven't we haven't met for now almost a year, so. Uh, right. But yeah, I'm okay uh, with that too. Okay. I'd be happy once we get started back with it, uh, doing that again. Okay. And now, uh, what uh, what what do we have the LOC here for? That's for our LOC meetings, and uh, usually LOC rep. Um, Lately, uh, we haven't really been doing any League of Oregon City stuff, right? Um, because uh, lockdown, and when, then we have the LOC call every Friday. So, right. um, uh, they also uh, Gretchen was doing the uh, conference every year. Well, that's open to any counselor, and it's just a matter of when there is a a specific LOC event, a summer conference, a winter conference, or a spring conference, or any of those things, all of us are eligible to participate. I don't know that we need to have anything specific like this for the LOC. I just want to put one caveat on that <laughs> because like the city budget is fairly limited on how much we can pay for the conferences. No, let me just say it this way you know, within our budget. There you go. <laughs> and then the council can select whoever they want to send. But right, right, exactly. So I, attended that the, I, I attended the last LOC conference and I also attended their recent training and I'm ha happy to continue on being like an LOC representative. Well, my point is, I don't know if we really need to have a representative. Uh, well, because, to, to attend the conferences and yeah, and it just back. depends on what the event is and uh, how we can. Uh, I don't want people to spend their own money on these things, but uh, you know, at the same time, uh, as Mike said, uh, we will try to make sure that people participate in those events uh, within budget. So, do we need to have an LOC place over here? I think it's for the best, Mayor. I think it's been one of those committee holdings that we, we have somebody that's designated to kind of, it just makes it a heck of a lot easier when we look to who's going to go represent the city on these sort of events. But um, if the council wants to change it, it's up to you guys. I'm, I'm open to suggestions and conversation. Hello. Oh, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to continue um, to attend the events. I've enjoyed attending them and learning from um, the, the conferences I've attended so far. And I, I had a work, I, I had a work commitment that I couldn't attend the last one, but any that come up, especially if I know well in advance, which the LOC is usually very good about sending out save the dates and things like that. So um, I, um, I'm happy to to attend. I, I don't necessarily need to have the appointment. Uh, so if there's someone else that wants a, an appointment and I just can try to attend the events, 
um, I'm happy to do that as well. So. Well, I'm still struggling with uh, the idea that this is the kind of thing that I would really love to spread around. I really yeah. uh, think that there's benefit in all the LLC training, you know, of interest that people want to participate in the council members. And the same thing goes for the conferences that uh, I don't know that I want uh, to have a situation where only one specific designated person goes to the conference. Uh, I think it's something that is a benefit to every counselor. So I'm not sure how to designate this. So Mayor, do you want to just mix it up on, uh, you know, I think they do what, two conferences a year? Yes, at least two. So if we did like, the primary for one and then the alternate for another. And then the following year we mix it up and get two others on there. And then we do, um, you know, there doesn't necessarily have to be a primary and an alternate. There could be a, <laughs> we could break it up by conference. You know, if it's like spring and fall or summer and winter or however they break up their conferences, we could easily manage that as long as it's, as long as we don't have to pay for like the whole council to go. Right. Um, it's, it's, re it's, feasible you know it's when we start paying for two or three people going on a conference it gets expensive right <clears throat> well how can we uh, designate this that uh, uh representation to be determined i love doing like some type of rotation do we have the upcoming year's schedule yet can we get that from the loc i have it i have it it's on the uh agenda yeah um it's you on have the LOC website for sure okay but and the annual conference is uh, October 23rd, 2021. The spring conference has been canceled. Okay. So, so I, haven't, I haven't gone to the big conference yet. So I'm happy to do the one in October or I can give it to someone else. I, you know, I, we can do this as a leave to determine later, but I like the idea of having a rotation that everyone attends a conference at least one point, in, you know, in, I, I do think that's important. I've been going to everyone. And my objective, and let me just tell you guys something here. And I think this is important for you all to understand. You know, I'm winding down. You guys are winding up. You need to get more exposure to these things. You know, I know what these conferences are. I participated. I think there's a lot to be learned. And there will may be times when they want me to participate in some way as mayor, but that does not mean that I am the only one participating. I really, if, if anything, I wanna rotate through so that all of you get exposed to it. So what do you wanna do with this? How do you wanna show this on this sheet? Well, I think I you just put it as rotating because I, I, I really think that that is a good idea for us all to get that exposure and that- uh, I do that involvement. I would, I would like to I agree. October conference. And then I think there's a, there's a ton of events throughout the year that are like monthly events or seminars and things like that, that I think we should cycle through, you know, the, the council throughout the year. And then next year I won't attend the big conference. And I think someone else should attend. And then, so, you know, all of us cycle through the various events that happen throughout the year. Does that sound like a good proposal? I like it. Uh, so how do we uh, indicate that on this sheet? So I think what we would do is identify Jamie as our primary for this year, right? Mm -hmm. And then we do a, uh, a varied, um, uh, what, varied participation, but we can still keep Councillor Thompson as the alternate for now. And then next cycle, Councillor Thompson would pop into the primary and then we identify a new uh, varied alternate and we just keep it rotating. Well, let's let's talk about this for a minute. And, and Shani, you said you went to the one, the last one, right? I did. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, that was one thing I wanted to point out is it's an all day conference. So not oh, every oh, yeah. work and family schedules no. can do that. So I, I love your idea of everyone being involved, but an all day conference might not work for every counselor. 
but there are tons and tons of free, what I've learned in my short time being involved with the LOC is there are a ton of free trainings and events that they have. And I was going to share that later in our meeting of two that are coming up just in the, in, within the next week. Right. Um, and that should be something that everyone can attend. Right. So, so we're the talking conference about is really the only things, thing that really. pay for. We're talking about the conferences and we're also talking about the training that they offer. Right. And I, and I can tell you that there's going to be some real specific training that's going to be coming up on uh, through their equity lens that is based on equity, diversity, and inclusion. That's being developed now. And I really think that's going to be important for us as a team to be ready to participate in that whole process. And I really want to see all of us go through that kind of training, okay? It, it, it's going to be really good. Uh, so, um, all right, let's just uh, leave it the way we said it. Uh, Jamie and Shauna, I'm almost leaning in towards, say, Micah, uh, would it be feasible for you to do, if you know when this conference, the next conference is coming up, would you be able to participate? Absolutely. That, that's the thing is I think if, if there's uh, enough, especially for like those one day a year, I mean, like I have the, the uh, CBDG block grant uh, uh, voting or, or um, uh, bids next, next Thursday. And that's an all day event as well. You just, mm -hmm. as long as on your calendar, you can make it work. Right. Uh, well, let me just say it this way. And I, I think this would be appropriate. Since Shauna, you went once already and you know that you're going to participate in other things, let's put Micah as the alternate. He hasn't been to one yet and neither has uh, Jamie. You haven't been to one yet either, have you? Sure. I, so I, I would like to go in October. Okay. So let's uh, make it Jamie and Micah and then we'll con that'll start the rotation, okay? All right. Then we can scroll down, Ronnie, because we already did Metro Council with uh, Jamie and Kate. Washington County Transportation Options, that's a staff thing. Uh, GPI, um, it's been a uh, Mayor Gibson and uh, Councilor Fender taking care of this. Right, I go to all of them. And, and what happens, just let me explain the GPI. The GPI meets on the same day every month as the uh, Metropolitan Mayor's Consortium. They're back to back. So uh, when we were holding them live, in, uh, we would do it in Tualatin and they would be back to back meetings at the same location. Uh, and we're continuing to do that via Zoom. Uh, so, uh, and the GPI is really designed to uh, be involved in the business aspect of what cities are trying to do, trying to grow business opportunities, bring in new business and all those kind of things. They've really been focused a lot on manufacturing type businesses and things at a much higher level than what we are actually uh, able to do in King City at this point. Uh, so, um, no, Mayor, I've never attended one of these meetings because I I don't even think I've I've seen an email about these. Um, so, is this something that you are primary and you want other people to also attend, or are you, is the alternate only when you cannot attend? Basically, the alternate would be, uh, needs to be available when I don't attend. Okay. But I'm, I'm trying to explain something to you guys. This is also a succession plan. Right. It says that I'm not going to be here, you know, as long as most of you, I hope. And so I want you to get exposed to these things, okay? So let's just make this one. Uh, Mike has a piece of it, 
because it's the business side of it, okay, in terms of uh, economic development and those kinds of things. So uh, what is, uh, Mike, your liaison, is that what that L stands for? Yeah, you know, I only chime in when we actually have something that we're presenting or we're involved with a particular project. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, my role is very minimal. Um, I only come in when, when needed, really. Right. So, uh, and usually they'll send me a notice and say, hey, can you come to this next one? Because we have something that's going to involve the logistics of King City. So right. at that point, I would jump on. But uh, otherwise, I just kind of, <laughs> most of the time, it, it conflicts with my uh, Washington County Economic Development forum which uh, always seems to be at the same time okay so uh it, it <laughs> it's a challenge for me but, okay. but i can set that aside and go to this if, if it need be right okay. how long are the meetings uh an hour okay sometimes an hour and a half okay and, and it's usually it starts at 1 30 right after the uh metropolitan mayor's consortium meeting ends okay i i would like to stay on as an alternate. I'd also like to try to uh, start attending uh, more, you know, well, I, I won't say more regularly, but attending, right? right. And, um, and that's an easy one that I can slot my lunch, you know, as long as it's not a three hour meeting, it's gonna be all afternoon. Oh, no. it's, it's never that. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, let's do it that way. And I would strongly recommend that you take the same approach to the WCCC, the Washington County Coordinating Committee. Okay. Okay. Yep. Tune in on it. As long as it's Zoom, and if you have the opportunity to tune into it yep. at, at noon okay. uh, uh, on that uh, third Monday, I think it is. Okay. Uh, but I will send you emails for both of these, okay? Okay, perfect. Because if I just can plug it in now for the rest of the year, we're, we're set, right? So, right. Uh, so that's fine. Okay. And, and the, the meeting dates are pretty consistent. Okay. That's good. And just let me explain one more thing about this. The only reason these, uh, this uh, Portland Inc. got bounced around a little bit because for the WCCC, not the WCCC, the uh, Metropolitan Mayor's Consortium meeting, we were trying to accommodate Ted Wheeler of Portland. And First Thursday didn't work for him, then Wednesday was better, and then we were bouncing back and forth to try to accommodate him. But right. we have stopped doing that. It's yep. consistently on uh, that uh, Wednesday uh, type session. Got it. Okay, so I'll, I'll forward the information to you on that. Okay. Mr. Mayor, can, yes. I, can I just ask, what is the, the primary purpose of Greater Portland Inc? They are uh, an organization, a nonprofit organization that is designed to attract business to the Portland region. To the Portland region being? The metro region. The, so that includes Portland and everything south all the way down to Wilsonville. So, so Dave, they, they'll coordinate with uh businesses and try to entice them into coming into the northwest region here the portland metro region they'll work with uh cities landowners and other interests to find them a site uh you know like when amazon was looking for a site P, uh, portland or greater portland inc tried to put together a proposal for a few sites around washington county and portland metro to pitch to amazon um there was a, a one just not too long ago they were looking for uh, 200,000 square feet of like warehouse. They, they, they basically, uh, when a company expresses an interest that they're looking for a site, Greater Portland Inc. does the footwork and then tries to match them with uh, one of the community partners like either ourselves or Beaverton or Tualatin or Tiger or, or whoever's involved. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, um, now the next one is the uh, West Side Economic Alliance and that's a membership. And Mike, we are, are you still paying our dues for the two of us? Yeah, so 
and that's a little challenging because it's like on an annual basis. So um, <laughs> if we add somebody else and we also have to pay for that membership in addition, and it's not, it's not the cheapest membership in the world. No, it's not. And you can't uh, just uh, have somebody else use your membership. That's the, right. That's you can the bring problem. a guest, I think, occasionally, though. So yeah, right. there, there's a chance that we could invite a guest and see if we could get them in. Um, but the way we have it set up is uh, senior staff and senior council attend to cover any sort of uh, political or logistics. Right. And we just had one uh, last week. Yeah. And it, some of them, I, I don't attend if there's like, a, you know, I'm very selective about the ones that I attend just because normally there's a cost associated with those as well. So it's like, here's your member fee for attending the conference and here's your non-member fee for attending the conference. So like the member fee for attending is like 50 bucks. The non-member fee is like 350. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those things where we pay for access essentially. And, and you know, with the uh, uh, COVID, it's, when a non-COVID uh, time period, we would get a free breakfast to go along with it, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know about free, because you do pay. <laughs> uh, pay for the breakfast, but now we're paying the same amount and we don't get breakfast. That's All right, it. yeah. So it's kind of, uh, it's, it's been a little, I don't know, I've been trying not to spend any money on them lately, so. No, I understand. Well, uh, let's leave it as it is and we'll figure it out, okay? All right, uh, we already did JPEG, right? Yes. And then uh, the Metro Policy Advisory Committee. Yeah, this is another great one to be involved with. See what Metro's working on, um, get more of a regional feel and involvement. I'd love to be considered for the primary on that one. Um, I, I know that it's just one, it's just the fourth Wednesday of the month, except December is the second. When I first looked at that, I thought twice a month. <laughs> but if any, if no one else was interested in. Well, and then, Micah, are you interested in staying as the alternate on that? Yeah, I'm happy to stay as the alternate on that. Okay, well, let's put Kate as the uh, primary and Micah as the uh, alternate. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, what's the difference between a water consortium and uh, the other, the water board. I think Ronnie and I were trying to figure that out earlier today. And also <laughs> I will tell you that I've never seen an email about this either. So I don't know if it's an active, I don't know if they've been meeting. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And I tried to look up the information for them and I couldn't find it. Um, the other thing I could do is ask John from uh, WAB, um, see if he knows anything about it. Um, and then we'll, we can table this one for later. Table this until we find out more. And, and it says over to the far right, Metro, the water, right. the, uh, uh, water board is more uh, with Tiger, right? right? Correct. Yeah, this and is regional water. Like it's more of a regional. The regional, yeah. Uh, but I did ask Metro, and they said they don't have anything to do with, the, with that. Hmm. Oh, really? So they must have just met at, re, uh, at uh, Metro. Region. Metro. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, well, let's just scratch it until we, I mean, no one has uh, sent us any information on it. <laughs> I found a regional water providers consortium um, and it lists a whole bunch of our neighboring cities as members and, and we're not on the list. Hmm. I went and put the link in the chat. Because um, we don't have water rights. I, right, so that makes that makes me wonder why we would need to be a part of it. <laughs> unless, yeah, unless we're willing to go out and buy water rides for a few million dollars, you know, <laughs> you know, point. Well, let's just scratch that one. We don't need to yeah. <laughs> burden ourselves with that. Okay. Good find, Kate. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Okay, HOAs. Uh, uh, let's see. We need replacements for Gretchen on so, Garden Villa and KCCA. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I can change screens here real quick. Hold on, because I made up. 
Um, I, for a request of some of the counselors, they asked for updated information. Can you guys see that? Uh, no. No. Okay, hold on, let me try. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is the new layout that I'm working with right now. Okay. Uh, oh, I like this. That way we have someone to contact. Awesome, Ronnie. Good job. Um, so homeowners association is broken down for each little area now. Um, I add alternates in case we wanted to, but I don't necessarily think that's we need to, but I mean, that's up to you guys. Mm -hmm. So there's your list for HOAs. So, and SMART is, uh, you're the uh, representative for Edgewater, right? Correct. The primary. SMART. I am. And you, you uh, interested in continuing? I think that's a yes, Mayor. I heard oh. yes. I okay. My chief of staff says yes. Who's the alternate? I am. Oh, I them, okay. I go to them anyway, so okay. I'm, I'm happy to continue. Okay. And next is and, Highlands, and that was Dave Platt. Yeah. Dave. Yes. Oh, and just. <clears throat> I just want to let you guys know that we are still trying to have consistent meetings with the HOA presidents. Uh, we've had what uh, three, we have a third one coming up. Is that right, Ronnie? Oh, uh, we have, it's either the third or fourth. I can't remember off the top of my head. And that's yeah. next week, I think, or the 26th. Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, that's important too, but uh, attending the uh, board meetings, the HOA board meetings, is what this one is really all about. So I uh, just want to separate those two things, but I will continue to try to meet uh, with the HOA presidents. Do we have information on when the board meetings are? I'm still gathering a lot of that information. Okay. Um, I've gotten a few replies, but um, like okay. Castle Oaks, they, they don't return my emails. Castle Oaks South doesn't so much have meetings ever. So. Yeah. And I think John was saying they were talking about dissolving eventually. <clears throat> Great. Okay. Uh, Highlands is fourth Wednesday. Fourth Wednesday. So Dave, you're continuing on the, um, uh, Highlands. Yeah. Do you need an alternate? Um, only for the company. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to, to join you, Dave. <laughs> okay. Uh, next is Royal, Royal Garden Condominiums Association. Currently we have no representation from the last, past years. When's Royal Gardens again? It is in between, actually, Barry, you can, if you're still on. Uh, it is between, uh, is that the one that you need to cross the bridge to get into? Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's off Royalty Parkway. You yeah, take the left, you go across Parkway. the little bridge, it's little condominiums yeah. right there on the creek. Uh, Okay. And it's uh, in behind the uh, Best Western. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we have any idea how often they meet, or? Um, I he that's the one that got a hold of me. They meet once a month. Yeah. Wow. Who was on that? Nobody. Nobody. It's a new add-on. Oh, it's a new add-on. So we need yeah. a new person for that. When do they meet? What time do we know? Um, at, no, not yet. I'll find out. Could we maybe table the, the HOAs until next month and find out when all the meeting times are? Because uh, some of these I'm happy to attend 
I, I don't want to take all of them, obviously, but uh, but I, th I think these these are crucial to make sure that someone from the council is there. Uh, but I think we need to really understand what time they are. We did in the chat function Edgewater's meeting is tomorrow night at six thirty, and um, they did change their time so that they wouldn't conflict for a couple sessions there they uh scheduled them the same meeting as council meetings but is that something that we can try to do or do or mayor do you want to put these you want to just get through these i, I just want to make sure that it works for everybody and yeah. uh so i agree <clears throat> that it probably make more sense for us to uh table until we know the exact times that they meet because candidly i'd really like to start attending the kcca meetings but it, you know, not if I'm not going to be able to do it, I don't, you know, if they're going to, so I, I think I kind of need before I, or before I volunteer for any others that aren't my own HOA. Then. Right. No, I understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, anybody object to that? No. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, see if we can finish up. CPO 4k. That's what's next, right? <clears throat> Yes. And uh, it says general rep. Yeah, that's supposed to be general reps. Rep. Okay. So I have strong feelings about CPO 4K. Uh, when there's something on the agenda that's related to us, I think we need to have representation. Uh, but I'm open to your thoughts on whether or not we need to have a specific person representing the city at the CPO 4K meeting. Didn't they just add us on again and didn't even tell us, Ronnie? Yeah, yeah. we have the agenda again? No, it said there was a uh, urban growth boundary update in their next meeting. Who's oh, it's Gretchen. it's Gretchen giving an update. No, Gretchen can't give an update on that. We have to have somebody from our team doing that. That is not something that Gretchen should be doing now. Right. Yeah, they keep throwing this stuff on the agenda and they don't authorize it through the city. So I don't understand what they're doing. And well, let, let me reach out to Kathy Stahlkamp because <clears throat> this can't happen. And the updates I need to steer this conversation away from CPO 4K to the process, okay? And I, so I don't appreciate having to uh, keep going through this. They need to come to us and ask us if we wanna give an update. They don't tell us to come and give an update. Uh, other than that, uh, my response is have everybody participate in the process that is going on with the transportation system plan and the master planning. CP4, CPO4K is not the forum for the expansion. I would agree. Okay. And it seems that the function of CPO4K is intended to be um, helping citizens engage with their city and and regional governments. Right. So, I, I mean, in your conversation, maybe just a reminder or a questioning, a wondering about that mission. Right. And I will, I will say, Mayor, I, I, um, I enjoy going to the CPO 4K meetings. I go to almost all of them unless um, I have a, a, some other commitment, but generally I attend all of them. Okay. Um, one of the issues with that, however, is that as I attend all of them and I have volunteered to take questions and, you know, on the fly, engage on conversation when needed to, or correct, uh, some conversations maybe, or discussion that has come out that it needs to be corrected, that the problem with that is that, uh, I think there's a little bit of an expectation almost set up if I attend that I'll speak on behalf of the city. And so yeah. I think I'm happy to attend, but I certainly think your conversation with Kathy um, should happen before that. And right. Right. But um, cause I, I do, I think we need to, we need to make sure that 
the process is followed. And while I'm always happy to talk with people, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right, uh, the right step. Right. I mean, to participate and answer a question mm -hmm. is one thing, right. but to give specific report outs on the expansion is inappropriate. Right. So I'll talk to Kathy about that. And uh, when is, did you guys see something that said there's an, a it's meeting coming Monday. up? Ne on Monday. Monday. I haven't received anything. Yeah. And oh, that. <laughs> No, no one here. Uh, sorry, Jimmy. Go ahead. No, sorry. I, it looks like Pat Garrett and Kevin um, Barton are uh, are on the agenda. You know, that's and what's the, the agenda item for us? What does it say? I haven't seen that. So, like urban growth boundary expansion update, and that's an agenda item. Yeah, <clears throat> Ronnie, yeah. you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it said. And I mean, I just saw it like this week and I'm, yeah. There, wait, wait a minute, it, who put this on there? Yeah, it was two things. It was the uh, King City Urban Growth Boundary and then there was a uh, local and law enforcement um, information, which I think Chief knew about, but I'm not sure. Okay, and that part of it is fine because that is part of the community conversation. And they've asked the police forces have been involved in that. So, but I, uh, if you guys have an email or something that you can forward to me so I can see specifically that that is an agenda item, and then I will contact Kathy Stahlkamp uh, tomorrow. Well, and I will say, um, if we recall, one of the, there might be needing to have another conversation out there too, Mayor, uh, because Gretchen at the last CPO 4K told the kind of, told everyone that she would give a monthly update on the expansion. So I think we need to be clear of, you know, with all of that. So I'll leave it, I'll leave it with you, Mayor. Okay. And it sounds like I need to have a conversation with Gretchen as well. I think so. Okay. All right. Okay. I will make those calls tomorrow. <clears throat> Mayor, okay. I just sent that to you. Pardon me? I just sent that to you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, what's next? Is that it? Was that the last one on the uh, list? We just need to identify who's our primary. Take Gretchen's spot. Was that going to be you, Jamie? I think Jamie said yes. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Dave, you are the alternate? Dave, yeah, I I, there, me and Dave, me and Dave are there all the you time. You guys are always there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and what do we have uh, Shauna as? What's I'm not sure L? what L means. We use one for something. Gonna... You said what the L? What the L mean? I'm, it says L like liaison? What the L does that mean? Liaison. <laughs> That's what I said. What the L does that mean? <laughs> Means you're automatically only. volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know that we need an L. Okay. So. Yeah, that's it. Be, I can be removed from that. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, we've been at it for a while. Uh, we've accomplished quite a bit. This is the first full session with all of us together. And I love it. I love the conversation. And uh, this is the way we operate. It's always going to be good. Uh, so uh, let's go around the horn now. And Ernie, you want to go first? Yeah, I guess I picked the wrong meeting to have like seven pages worth of stuff to go over. So I hope you guys, <laughs> if you need to take a bathroom break, you might want to do it now. <laughs> no, go, Ernie. I'll keep it short. That's okay. I'll, I'll keep it short. So uh, t obviously TVFNR kind of stole a little bit of my thunder with uh, uh, we have gone through our first round of COVID-19 vaccines for the police department wow. uh, who participated. Those who participated were inoculated, uh, I think it was first week of the month. And so our second round will be coming up. I should get the dates tomorrow. Um, we have 
February for the second shot. Um, just for those who haven't gotten it, uh, the first shot, uh, your arm hurts for about 36 hours. And that's about it. Wow. And then, so, so we'll, we'll uh, see what the update the update is when it's Pfizer or the Madeira. I we uh, is it Moderno or Moderna? Moderna? Whatever that one is. That's the one I. That's the, the one I got. Pfizer is a two, isn't it? They're both two. Are they both two? Uh, oh. They're both two. They're just spaced differently apart. I think the Pfizer is three weeks apart, and the uh, Moderna one is uh, four weeks apart, and that's the one that we got for the city. Okay. Uh, so that, uh, and then we'll we'll have our second round coming up here in another week or so. Okay. And so that's that's going good there. Um, so did you say the, all, all of you have had your first shot? Those who participated, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And stuff. It's not a mandatory thing. I think we're at no, uh, 83% of uh, employees <laughs> that were eligible took the, took the shot. And honestly, that's actually right on par with TVF&R. They're at like 85%. Okay. And stuff. So you, even they didn't have all their employees. Interesting. Uh, that sounds good. It is rather interesting, David. And it's a it's a conversation to have another time. But um, and so then we move into uh, we've talked a lot about the events in Tigard, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and it's something that um, you know we are everybody in Washington County is a critical incident away from something like that happening. And so one of the things we're finding out is that we are, with the exception of Mobile Field Force, which is typically the riot team that Washington County has as interagency team, we are woefully unprepared and for, for something like that to happen. And even if I, I came in and, and Courtney and I were kind of man the city hall just to see if anything was going to spill over that night, but even if they wanted the help and I could send the help, we don't have the equipment. And so that's something that Mike and I have gotten into here lately where we're going to, uh, we already have, I just ordered the equipment to where we can at least have some basic rudimentary um, control items and protection items for us uh, to be able to roll into something like that, to be able to offer the help. And, and more importantly, when we, need to help ourselves. And so all the cities here in South Cities, we are making a monster order for stuff that's uh, ballistic helmets, uh, you know, batons, the riot shields, just rudimentary gear that's gonna keep the officers safe. And with that being said, you know, there's always been kind of that drawdown, people didn't want people to look militaristic. Well, a ballistic helmet looks like it's military look, right? So. It's kind of we have to take one with the other if we're going to be able to provide, you know, the help and protection for our officers. So just kind of a little heads up there. And uh, so, I mean, and, and it's expensive. There's these cities are going to be, not us, but these cities are going to be spending mid five figures in outfitting their people. So wow. it's not cheap stuff. Yeah. And you saw, I mean, you've seen, uh, I mean, downtown Tiger looks horrible yeah. and, and stuff from what happened. So, um we're from there and then obviously they you know the democratic headquarters in portland got destroyed today too so here this afternoon and uh so you know there's just things like that that are going on um and uh, you know we're just like I said safety is the utmost thing for for our crews we're so small so we we need that um i think i'm probably just going to leave, leave it with that do we have, do we have vest protection so, yeah, so what we, we have, everybody uses the outer carrier. So that's the thing that you see that all our gear is draping off of. That's actually a ballistic vest. And so mine, you know, any, anytime you want to come by the office, you can grab mine. It weighs 30, like 35 pounds and stuff with all the gear that's hanging off of it. So they're set up there. There obviously is, I, I'm not prepared to put people in full catcher's gear like you see, like a lot of the Portland people do. Um, Officer Kazmierski's on mobile field force. And so, you know, you'll see him if he's out and about and something like that happens, you may see him with shin guards on or something like that, but it's not something that we're prepared to do, um, stop short of, right? And so they're just a little bit of the, I just want them to have the rudimentary stuff, the basic rack control stuff. And then the other part is the training. Um, you know, it was, it was one of the things I brought up in our uh, chief's meeting as today with, 
we're going to all buy this stuff and we're all on board with it. We have to train. We have to have this rudimentary, you know, be able to go out and, and be able to form a, form a skirmish line, be able to control, you know, whatever it's going to be. And so that's something that'll be coming down the, the line pretty soon too. And so it's, everybody's on, the entire countywide is, is on board with it. So hopefully it's something that will happen pretty soon just because it, it hit our, it hit our doorstep basically. Right. And, uh, you know, happened to hit Tiger. And, and so it just kind of is a stark reminder of what could happen yeah. as far as that goes. And I, I'll cut it short there. Um, obviously it's been a long meeting and stuff, but uh, yeah. we'll have some more information. On but, some you know, next so next have month. you uh, heard or are you aware of anything that uh, happened down in Salem today? It was that threat. Of uh, you, you know, I, I didn't see anything that was, uh, you know, as far as uh, I think I saw one or two things that were um, that kind of came down, but nothing that required action. I think uh, mm -hmm. the only thing I saw was I while we were first meeting was I got a phone call about the stuff that happened in Portland at the Democratic headquarters there. And so I was kind of streaming through that real quick. But other than that, I haven't seen anything. OK. All right. Well, that's good news <clears throat> that uh, uh, they did a good job of preparing uh, for the potential of it down in Salem and just about in every other uh, state capital around the country. So uh, I think it, uh, hopefully that will spell success and that this stuff will start dying down. So, uh, okay, Ernie, thank you so much. Well, uh, Mike. Um, let's see. So I'll try to make it as quick as possible and as short and brief. So we had our first uh, technical advisory meeting uh, yesterday uh, with our master plan. And um, we're trying to get prepared for planning commission meeting for next week, where we'll do just a brief presentation to the planning commission on uh, where we're sitting with the TSP the uh, master plan and the uh, House Bill 2001 and 2003. So um, that those are all moving ahead. Um, the SAC for the master plan will likely meet in early February. Um, this week has been extremely busy um short week because of the holiday so um and it seems like everyone's now back from you know christmas and new year's vacation so they're all trying to get everything through in the first couple of weeks of the year so it has been a, a bit of a it's been a little exhausting the last few days so uh, we also have that pathways grant uh, odot pathways grant is due by the end of the month we're trying to get that knocked out as well Okay. Just a lot of little stuff that we're trying to keep up with. We also have to get the RFP out, like we mentioned earlier, with the community psyche grant. We have to get that out, awarded, get the IGA turned back in. Um, Ronnie and I had a presentation with Metro Trails this morning. Um, the MTAC had a meeting this morning as well regarding um, Metro transportation facilities and those sort of things. So um, everything's kind of ramping back up, but we're just kind of hanging in there for now. That's right. It's, it's hard to believe it's almost uh, the middle of, uh, well, January is almost gone already. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Right. So, but I understand how busy you guys are. And I, once again, I appreciate everything that you guys are doing and staying on top of all this stuff. It, there's a lot. Yeah. And <laughs> I truly appreciate it. And everyone has their iPads now. Hopefully those are working properly. Um, we're still struggling with internet in the building like wi-fi internet in the building i'm having a really hard time with wi-fi at my house i don't know if it's like all around but it's just crazy yeah it's, i haven't had any problems i mean i know that there are certain peak periods when i think it's a little slow but uh everything is working fine uh, what carrier do you have i think we have uh charter but it's through the bug um there in the office and so it basically, it's like an extra layer of security that doesn't necessarily interface with mm -hmm. your standard internet connections. And so it'll kick you off or it won't allow you to connect or 
it won't allow your camera to connect, but it'll allow you to connect. So it's constant problems, constant issues. And we end up having to either set up our own mobile hotspot with our cell phones and use our data plans, or we have to leave the office and go home to do a meeting. It, it's just, and then I think like, I know uh, a couple of our computers have now reached a stage in, in their life where the last update by Microsoft has now screwed up all the um, functionalities for Zoom or Teams. So we can no longer use those and we can no longer use the flash player that's no longer compatible with our systems. So wow. we're in the process of trying to upgrade our computers now. How do we handle IT at the city, Mike? Do we contract with a company? Is, is it you? No, it is, uh, it's Global Data Works and we've been, we've had our frustrations. So, um, and that's being nice. Okay. Yes, well? you are being nice. I'm really concerned about what they've been able to deliver and I don't know what kind of contract we actually have with them, but I think we really seriously need to shop for better service. I mean, the question is how far is it going to set us back? Right. I understand. And what's going to happen to our entire system if we, if we change now. So it's, but it's, we can't be handicapped this way where we can't even uh, have internet connection within the business. Having to use your phone as a hotspot and all that, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I, and I, I'm not saying better. that toward you guys. I'm just saying that uh, what we're being provided isn't working. And then waiting a year for iPads? Just right. Just it, waiting it, a year for the officers to have their MDTs? Yeah, I'm, yeah that's... I'm telling you, I could have had them in a week and I don't know what the hell they were doing. So, oh, I, I didn't mean it to sound so, but this strikes a chord with me and I, we just need to do better. So Mike, you have, and Ronnie, you guys have my full support and we need to do something differently because this is unacceptable. Well, I think it takes some planning, figuring out, put our heads together on what it's gonna, it's definitely gonna hurt our operability for a period of time. Okay. I, we'll, we'll get it figured out, okay? It's gonna be a challenge, but we can't operate our business this way. Yeah. That's all I have. I'll shut up. Okay, no, that, that's what we're here for. Okay, Dave, why don't you go? Do you have anything? Well, I have a, actually I have a question on this upcoming um, event for LLC down in the city that will be virtual at this point. Now that's a, a non-cost participation. Are you guys familiar with it? Uh, Are you no, talking I'm, about the one next week? Uh, I think it's the 28th. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's no cost. Do you know what it is? Yeah, it's um, City Day at the Capitol. Oh, City Day at the Capitol. Okay. Yeah. Is that what you're referring to, Dave? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a no-cost item. Okay. Well, that strikes me as interesting. Okay. And you're welcome to participate. And is it virtual? Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah, it is virtual. Yeah. Cool. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, Dave. Thank you. Uh, Kate. Sure. I have a quick question for Mike and Ronnie. Have we had anyone apply for planning commission? How many people? So far, three. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, next question for everybody. I really want to see us move forward with um, selecting a youth counselor for our city council. And I'm wondering what conversations have been had. I, I don't, I've heard it mentioned over the past months, but where are we on that? <laughs> no, well, I don't think we've done anything uh, really uh, at this point. Uh, when are we gonna have our work session? Uh, we need to uh, discuss that 
we would like to do it soon uh, because there's other things that we need to really uh, work on. Do we need to do, is there anything in our charter that allows us to have a youth counselor? Do we need to go down that path or do we need to do something more simplified? Can we do something more simplified than that? I think it would be just kind of a honorary sort of thing without, without, unless we wanted to put some, I don't know that we could put someone on that couldn't vote. They, they couldn't, they couldn't vote. It, it wouldn't would be a voting member. No. I think they can. I don't think there's an age restriction on the planning commission seats. Well, for council, I think you have to be an elector of, of where you live and you, you wouldn't be able to do that until you're 18. Um, but for planning commission? Oh, no, I'm talking about a city council. That you have oh, okay. Like a, yeah, yeah. a, like a honorary, you know, representative planning commission would be great also. Mm -hmm. That'd be really great. Yeah. Anyway, I, think we need to, I agree with you, Kate. We need to talk about both of those opportunities. I think planning commission is a really unique opportunity for a young person in our community, especially with the uh, expansion process that's going on. And uh, city council is also a great learning opportunity for a high schooler. So uh, let's make sure that that's at the top of our list for our work session and Hopefully, we can get a work session in February. That would be great. I don't have anything to report just yet. Um, I could tell you a funny story or something, but it's late, so I'll <laughs> finish, finish for now. <laughs> we'll, we'll, put, uh, we'll table that until next meeting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Micah? Um, I, I don't have much to report at this point. I was at the uh, the TAC meeting earlier this week and was really uh, uh, enthusiastic about uh, where we're going and and the opportunities there. Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have our um, rating uh, and presentation of the um, applicants for block grants for the CBDG next Thursday. Um, and there's uh, some very, very uh, worthy uh, groups to be part of. I'm also excited for once we start into our expansion and can find some projects that uh, might fit also with that CBDG visit vision uh, that, that we can take part in it as a city. Um, but uh, not, nothing really new to report at this point. Um, I'll have more after our uh, um, experience next Thursday with the CBDG. Okay. Thank you, Micah. Shanna. Um, there's a couple of free trainings coming up with the League of Oregon Cities, one that Dave asked about a few minutes ago. If anybody's interested, um, just shoot me an email and I can send you information about them. Uh, like we talked about next, next week, the 28th, I think it's Wednesday, a city day at the Capitol, which I plan to attend. I think it sounds really interesting. Um, and then this Friday, there's a, I'm not exactly sure what it's, it's about the lodging tax. And I'm not sure yeah, how much that applies yeah. to King City, but um, yeah. if you're interested in learning more about trainings or anything about the LOC, just shoot me an email and I'd be happy to share. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Sean. Jamie. Uh, not really much to report. I'll be very brief. Um, Representative Naron and I are continuing investigation onto what we can do with the zombie house. That's kind of uh, a pet project uh, between the two of us. <laughs> Just simply, we've had enough. Um, and then um, I think that's all I have to report for right now. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And let's see, Smart. Yes, uh, I don't have uh, much to report myself. Um, I, I was able to finally get a hold of someone at the um, advance, the water board advisory um, team. And I was able to add my name and Jamie, but now I'll call back, I'll get in touch with them to change, to update that to um, uh, to Kate now. Um, and then now the, the Edgewater meeting tomorrow, I plan to attend that. I also try to attend the LOC meetings uh, that are virtual, like uh, Dave and uh, uh, Shana just talked about, I try to sign up for those as they come up uh, and I have availability. So I'm planning to attend the one of next week as well. That's all I have to report today. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. 
Uh, okay, well, I'll close out. Um, really don't have much. Uh, we did. I participated in a Martin Luther King event on Monday, um, and it was all pre-recorded by uh, Tualatin Valley Cable TV. Uh, Kevin Howard of uh, that organization was the producer of it, and it's called Awareness in Action, and it is available for you to view on uh, YouTube, uh, if you so choose. But we had uh, presentations or uh, speaking roles from Tiger uh, High students. We had Mayor Walt Williams of uh, River Grove, Mayor uh, Jason Snyder of Tiger. Uh, we all participated in speaking roles uh, for that event. And it was very well done. There's some others, there's some concerned citizens, and this is all part of a uh, uh, race unity uh, team that I've been working with is really headed up by a person by the name of Chris Raglan, who is an employee of the city of Tualatin. And we did our first event in 2019. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an important thing to do. You know, not just talking about honoring Martin Luther King, but it's talking about uh, taking the legacy of Martin Luther King and applying it to today's situation, today's world. Uh, what are the things that he was uh, trying to uh, uh, instill in the thoughts and hearts of Americans? And are we still uh, trying to do the same things that he tried to accomplish, uh, which ended up costing him his life? So it was an honor to be a part of that and to participate in it. So uh, if you guys get a chance, uh, take a look at it. I think it's worthwhile seeing. And so here we are. 2021, uh, I'm excited to have this team in place and I'm excited uh, when I think about the things that we're going to accomplish. Uh, we have our work cut out for us. There's a lot to do, uh, but I think we have the right team in place to be able to accomplish everything that we need to. And um, I'm honored to continue as mayor. And I know that Jamie is honored to continue as uh, council president and we're just gonna get as much done as we possibly can. And I've made it clear, you heard a kind of theme that I'm talking about in terms of you guys being involved more in the things uh, that are going on, because there's gonna be a changeover. This is gonna be my last term. And I don't think I'm gonna waver from that. So uh, I'm dedicated and committed to doing everything we can, but I'm gonna pass it on to this younger, group of counselors. You guys do realize this is the youngest this council has ever been. It is absolute. Now, we still have two seniors, and that's me and Dave. And to put it in perspective, when I got on the council in 2008, I was the youngest counselor, and I was already an old retired dude. So uh, we have the diversity. That is what we want to see. We have women. We have men, young men brown-skinned men, and seniors. I fit both. So, you know, we do. We have a good, diverse group, and I'm proud of this group. So uh, let's just roll up our sleeves and get as much done as we possibly can, okay? Right. So with that, we do need a motion. I move to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm hungry and I gotta put my kids in bed. At least make it sound like you wanted to talk a little <laughs> bit longer. Just one more thing. Yes. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, you guys. Good night, everyone. Thank all you. Right. I'm, I'm assuming you all voted to approve. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Bye, everybody. You guys Bye. Have a good night. Stay safe. All right. Bye. Thanks.